That's right, everybody. As always, thank you so much for tuning in and making this your live stream of choice. For those of you who are watching uh, this live, you probably got my message there that I was going to be a few minutes late. Of course, right before I was going to go live, camera goes awry, everything is out of sync, everything is blurry, and nothing worked. So I had to do a quick reset. It looks like everything is working. So if you guys can uh, point uh, excuse me, point out in the chat if everything sounds okay, looks okay, if it's out of sync, if it's blurry, if it's trailing, whatever, let me know in the chat. Now, you're going to see me look all around. For those who haven't been to a live stream before, I have four monitors in front of me. A lot of times my chat is over here. Uh, sometimes my visuals are up here, and I try and look at you guys all I can. Hot Sauce, thank you so much for that Super Chat donation. I truly, truly appreciate it. Everything that uh, does come in from the Super Chat, just so you guys know up front, goes directly into this channel. So it goes towards FOIA documents, web server hosting, uh, licensing of music and visuals and fun stuff on this channel that you have uh, hopefully seen. If not, make sure you click on the like and subscribe button. And of course, turn the notifications on so you get notified of these live streams. Now, uh, things look and sound fine. Yep, good, good. All right, that's perfect. So with live streams, anything goes. Honestly, I may have to break because my dog starts barking. I've, I have positioned my animals because I am solo at the house. I have a pretty big puppy and uh, I've opened the door. I've let him out uh, so he can come in and out. Who knows, though, if he comes busting through that door behind me. Again, anything goes. So that's why I enjoy live. Uh, but if I do have to break, I'll apologize in advance. I'll just put a temporary graphic up, go do what I need to do with the dog and then pull him in. So here's the deal. Uh, it's Saturday morning. You guys are co still coming in. And that's awesome to me, uh, simply because it is Saturday morning. It's a little bit early here on the West Coast. And obviously on the East Coast, a little bit later, but mid-afternoon on a Saturday. And you guys are joining me. So I do appreciate that. So a special thank you for all of you who are joining me live. Now, with the chat room, just so you know, because this is what I call an Ask Me Anything or an AMA. You'll probably see different podcasters and YouTubers and stuff do this. I try and do it every couple months or so because it's the opportunity for me to essentially interact with all of you. I put a lot of videos out there, put a lot of ideas, put a lot of documents, put a lot of all sorts of information. And I know that you guys have questions. Travis Dearborn, thank you uh, for that super chat donation, man. Really, really, truly appreciate that support. Uh, Bo, also right behind him. Bo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all of you who are already supporting this, this live stream. So uh, back to this. So I call it an AMA. And again, it's, it's just that it is my opportunity to interact with all of you guys. Now the uh, I'm going to put the put the uh, number on screen. And uh, since I'm kind of frantically trying to bring everything back online because before that reboot I had everything all set up and running and uh, sadly with that reboot everything obviously is, is shut off so I'm kind of starting all of that uh, again but I'm going to put the toll-free line to call in this is how the priority goes on the ask me anything priority is going to go to the super chat questions because I can see them out of the corner of my eye if I do miss anything I'm going to apologize in advance trust me I will either get to it uh, in this show just kind of keep asking if you can. Uh, but the super chat is really big and they get blasted. So I see that text messages. You'll see a text number two uh, that literally goes right to my phone. So I will um, be able to read those a lot easier than the chat room questions away from the super chat. And of course, a toll free line. Now I've also got and of course, I lost it on that reboot. I just realized so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and pull up really quick the Twitter questions uh, because that was going to get me started. And I do. This is the joy of live, guys. I mean, this is uh, this is what we do. So I had posted a thing out there on Twitter, had quite a few questions, all in a Word document ready to print. And I think in my frantic uh, reboot, deleted it. So let me pull that up. We'll just kind of go through them one by one as we go through. So let me switch screens. What I'm going to go ahead and do is put on the call in line and the text line. And again, that is your opportunity to call in. I do ask this. If I pull you in and put you on hold, 
Uh, you will hear hold music. My voice doesn't feed back until I bring you onto the show. Just make sure you turn down your speakers. That way we don't get feedback. Uh, so make sure you turn that down, but I will pull you on. It's a queuing system, so it's going to tell you what what position you are in line. And uh, again, second in line, third in line, uh, depending upon how many people call. So we'll be able to do that. So we're already starting uh, all the way from Canada, actually. Let me go ahead and pull on this caller from, from Canada. Hey, thanks so much for, uh, for, for calling in. You're live on the air. Who's this? Hi, this is Thomas from uh, Ontario, Canada. I actually called in before, but a lot has happened since then. Uh, a lot has happened. Yeah, I haven't done this in a, in a while, obviously. But uh, Thomas, thanks for for calling in again. Uh, what's your What's your question? What can I do for you? So my question was about the recent statements made by the NASA director. Yes, I was. So I was just wondering, what's your take on that? Do you think that's a big deal that he's what he said? I do think it's a big deal, uh, simply because government agencies uh, and, and obviously the NASA administrator, Bill Nelson, is talking about uh, UFOs. And uh, let me, before I uh, miss this, Jenny Lloyd and Stephen, uh, who has been a longtime fan uh, of this uh, site, but also more so a friend. I remember meeting Stephen more than 20 years ago. You guys, thank you so much uh, for all of those uh, super chats. Let me... Um, also, thank Philip. I'm sorry I missed that. I'll get to your question, Philip, in a moment. So thank you guys for the super chat. So before I lost that, I wanted to make sure I thank them. So back to your question. I think it's very, very important because this is the first time the government agencies and the sitting directors and the administrators are actually commenting on it. For those who missed it, Bill Nelson started talking about how they are looking into uh, essentially UAPs. And if there is evidence that potentially there's life out there, they're going to take an interest in it. That is why I feel that it's important because after all of these years, those types of, of people, uh, either elected officials or uh, appointed officials, have never really commented on it. They've never talked about it. Uh, they, they pretty much shy away from it, or if they do talk about it, make a joke. And it seems like there's a shift now that they are taking it seriously. What's going to happen with this report once it comes out? That's anybody's guess. I'm sure you guys will have questions about that and we'll get into it. Uh, but the the reality of Bill Nelson talking about it, definitely a big deal. Um, when they did their press conference, and I think I posted this video on this channel, when they did the press conference, Bill Nelson had kind of said that they were taking the UAP phenomena seriously and then passed it to one of their scientists. And uh, they call him Dr. Z, I believe. I, I don't know how to pronounce his full name. I think it's Dr. Z. And uh, essentially what he kind of spiraled into was more the search for extraterrestrial life in the cosmos versus, I guess, the search for extraterrestrial life in our atmosphere, if that makes sense. So he kind of spiraled into what NASA is more known for, for trying to find, for find life. But at least the administrator kind of acknowledged these Navy videos and essentially they were taking it seriously. So long-winded way to answer your question, I know, but I at least wanted to give some groundwork for those who weren't familiar. But yeah, it's absolutely important. You're still there, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So it, do you have it any... Is, it seems like a big, a big shift in the public perception of this issue. And it's, it's just, it's one more example. It is. Yeah. And there's it's quite a few things. There's quite a few. Do you have any ideas? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah. Do you, do you have any ideas on uh, like why there has been this significant shift in the past year? Because it doesn't seem like there's any new information. It's more just like uh, there's been a narrative change. Uh, I mean, I mean, new information in terms of what the government agencies have. Not yeah. New information for obviously there's new information for us as citizens. Yeah, I, I think. Why they, I, I'm not sure what the true core reason is, but it's fascinating. Uh, and and I, I mean, I wish I had a more eloquent answer for you, but I don't think there there is one. I do think that peer pressure, as silly as that sounds plays a role in this, meaning that the mainstream media hounding on this topic, uh, sometimes very bad reporting, other times very good reporting. But regardless, this massive interest 
uh, and essentially pressure from the mainstream media and the general public that's reading those articles, I think is absolutely playing a role uh, in 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 the shift. And the reason why I say that is that that there has been a shift in tone with the media. Again, sometimes very bad reporting, and I very much harp on that because I do think it's it's bad reporting in, in many cases, but it's a serious toned bad recording uh, reporting, uh, if that makes sense. And so what I think happens uh, as a result of that is with that serious tone, what happens to the government and, and the elected and appointed officials is they realize if they just kind of start dismissing this again and fall back on their jokes, that you're going to have even more peer pressure from the general public going, hey, wait a minute, this may or may not be aliens. That's not the point. But if if the most highly trained fighter jet pilots are, are, are coming forward and they're talking about this and they're scared or, or fearful about what these objects are in some of the interviews, they talk about that, that essentially that um, that fear, that trepidation of is this a is this something I'm going to have to fire upon or, or, or evade? Are they going to fire upon me? There's an issue there. Yep. And if they continue that, that fallback of, ah, it's, you know, little green men, ha, 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 uh, that would not bode well for them. So I think that they were forced to do the shift. And then once they did that shift, now that it has paved the way for them to do this report, what that report again will entail, I think, is anybody's guess. But I think that that plays a huge role in the shift. And even even not just military pilots, commercial pilots who have planes full of passengers that have things flying right over them and they have no idea what they are. And the FAA doesn't either. That's right. And I and I think we're starting to hear more and more about that. Uh, we're, we're, we're also seeing or at least the general public is seeing that this is something that has gone on for decades, right? This is not anything that started in 2017 uh, with the discovery of ATIP, and then, oh, boom, all of a sudden we have this phenomena. No, it has stretched back decades upon decades upon decades, and some of the most interesting stuff, uh, albeit happened decades ago, happened when the government said they had no interest in it. And I think people, again, general public-wise, are waking up to that reality that this has been a phenomena that's been around for a long time and it's nothing new and pilot encounters both commercial and military again there's there's nothing new about that although it it's great that they're getting on 60 minutes and talking about it and so on and so forth but i think people are are definitely waking up to the reality this is nothing new for sure yeah so I, hey th thank you could, yeah um, go ahead uh I don't know if you caught this, but recently there was an interview with uh, Sam Harris. Uh, I, I've, I've, I did not catch it, to be honest with you, but I, I, I've heard rumbles about it, uh, that he was like asked yeah. to go in and pl play a role in disclosure or something like that. Right. I, I, I find that very strange. I don't know. I, you know, claims like that, my problem yeah. with it uh, is if, if, if he really was asked to do that, he was probably asked not to talk. I mean, I would think that he would be asked not to talk about it until it happened. So for me, when I hear claims like that and, and claims like that are nothing new either, these big grandiose uh, claims of people being on the inside or playing instrumental role in some world shifting event. I don't know the man personally. I know he's incredibly popular as a huge following I just don't know really anything about them. Um, but again, how I approach claims like that is that's great. But until it happens or until we see something, um, I, I just kind of take it for what it's worth, you know, and, and sadly, a lot of those types of claims never pan out. So time will tell. I mean, hey, <laughs> if we have disclosure tomorrow, uh, yep. I'll be a, ham a happy camper, uh, especially if he's out there spearheading it or was, you know, consulted on it. But regardless, I, I just... Um, I just take those things as a, with a grain of salt, and if it happens, it happens. If not, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, and there have been a lot of celebrities making big claims recently, like Baker Mayfield. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah. that's the other problem with celebrities, too, is they kind of hop on the bandwagon, and uh, do they want the press? Because celebrities, when they come out, 
God bless them, you know, get a ton of press. But like, why? You know, I mean, that's that's great that, you know, celebrity X, Y, Z, because I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but either saw UFO or they're interested or, or whatever. But look at how much press they get, you know, and they're entertainers and they they live for that press and publicity and this, that and the other thing. So I'm not saying that nothing happened to celebrities like that, but it's just always a major red flag for me when stuff like that happens. So, yeah, like Tom along sounds a bit, I mean, who knows, but sounds a bit out there. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. I think a lot, a lot of those celebrities are quite a bit out there. But anyway, man, I, I it, p- truly appreciate you calling. I'm not trying to cut you off. I just want to get to uh, some of these questions here that are piling up. But thank you so yeah, much for yeah. calling in from from Canada, man. I really appreciate it, and I hope you call in again. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Anytime. All right. So uh, numbers are on the screen. I've got tons of text messages that we're going to get to here. There was one that I promised that was a chat, um, excuse me, a super chat from Philip or Philippe. Uh, Where do you think UAP phenomena is? Well, uh, that's a great, uh, very generalized question uh, and one that that can simply be answered this way. I mean, it's up, but you know, I mean, it's uh, it's in our skies. There's no denying that the phenomena is definitely here. Uh, the, it, so it's, it's real. Uh, there's, there's no, there's no way about it. The question mark though, is, uh, what it is, is it alien? Is it top secret military technology? We're not really sure. And I know that there's a lot of people that are new. Um, and I'm not sure if you, sir, are uh, new to the, to the topic or been around for a long time, but I think that one thing, if you are new, uh, or newer to it, that, you know, definitely, look at the history behind the phenomena, how long it's been around, where it's being seen, both in our skies and in our water, you know, going in and out of our water. There's a lot of cases that have been bantered about lately. So uh, where it is, there's your physical locale. What it is, that would be an even bigger question and one that's very, very hard to answer. So hope that uh, that helped you a little bit there uh, with with your question. Uh, Let me go ahead and pull... Let me pull another caller onto the line. Uh, who is this? Hey, John. Plan B calling from New York. Hey there. How are you? Good. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. What's your question? Well, I just wanted to start off and say uh, that I've been a big fan of your work for a long time. I think uh, we're both roughly around the same age. Been following you since the 90s and just uh, really proud of, to see and how you've progressed with the channel and and uh, all the success you've been having. I appreciate that. Thank you. Now, back to business. Uh oh. Um, S- sounds like a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, there's a lot of action going on out there in the UFO field, and you know, I'm a little skeptical of some of it. Um, but I'm just wondering, do you have any sort of fear? that this sort of disclosure movement is being used as like an excuse to maybe implement some sort of uh, space war fighting domain. Well, look, I mean, that that's definitely part of a bigger, I don't want to call it conspiracy theory because I don't want to diminish it, but it, that's definitely part of, of, of the theory of some secret agenda behind this, that is there something that, is going to play a role in funding our space warfare. The space force is still relatively new. Is it all connected? And I'm not sure about that. I mean, I I think for me, I look at it more simplistically in the fact that this phenomena is real. I think they finally have been convinced of that, meaning the general uh, uh, consensus of the U.S. government that they've been um, convinced. And so they, they have to figure out what it is. If, if they, meaning the government starts funding, you know, space, uh, whether it be technology or the Space Force and connecting it to the UAP phenomena, I think that in itself would be not only very telling, but also it would be kind of um, a big interest to the general public in a bad PR kind of way. So I think that what's going to happen when the government addresses this more and more is they will do everything they can to separate the space domain versus UAP. Because if they connect it, then the general public will connect it and say, aha, this is this is uh, definitely leaning towards an alien thing. And I don't think they want that. I think that's a PR disaster. So y- yes, it's a very prevalent theory. I'm just not sold on it yet. Hmm. Um, and what is it about this that we are so sure that this isn't 
um, U.S. military technology. I know they've come out and said, well, this isn't ours. But, I mean, if it was ours, would they even say that, you know, originally? I mean, it just seems logical that they would deny that it was our technology in the first place. I think it's a great question. When it comes to videos that the U.S. military itself has said, we cannot identify these, there are two options. They're lying, which we know they've done it in the past. So are they lying now? I mean, that's anybody's guess. Or the second option is they're actually telling the truth. They have no idea what these things are. I pushed on those original three videos, which again, for those who aren't aware, those are officially unidentified flying objects or unidentified aerial phenomena. And that is the true designation of those three videos. My connection to that was that I was able to get the Navy to first go on the record about it in September of 2019. When that story then broke, I started pushing the Pentagon, asking them, OK, let's let's try and figure out, is there some other explanation here? And I pushed the Pentagon for an answer on would a branch of the military, let's say the U.S. Air Force, test top secret or classified, you know, classified technology against the U.S. Navy without their knowledge? Because at the end of the day, you now have the Navy who's actually telling the truth that they have no idea what those objects are because they were not read in as as a military branch. And the U.S. Air Force that's testing this highly classified technology does it against the Navy. I thought that that was plausible. I wasn't trying to 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 prove it rather than I just wanted to see what they would say. And they came back and said that they would never do that, that they would never test without the Navy's knowledge any type of classified technology. So that was a interesting revelation. Doesn't sound real big, but for me it was fascinating because that was an out for them. That was an out to say, uh, yes, potentially they could could test classified technology. Uh, maybe they won't admit that 2004 Nimitz encounter was, but sp speaking in broad strokes, would they say it? And they said that they would never do it. So that in itself proved, okay, if the government really doesn't know what these things are, and from 2004 to 2019, when I wrote that story originally, if they were unable in that amount of time to truly figure out what these objects were, does that ultimately rule out unidentified, or does that ultimately rule out classified objects um, that were being captured by these F-18 pilots? And uh, I mean, I'll let all of you guys decide, but it's it's interesting. So are they lying? You know, are they just saying, yeah, yeah, we have no idea what these things are. But in reality, they know darn well what they are, maybe. Uh, and and I, it wouldn't surprise me because I've caught them in many lies before. But one one thing I will point out to you as well, and, and I'm sure we'll get more deeper into this into the channel it, or as this um, video progresses on this channel, in that the leaked post gimbal go fast and FLIR videos. So the ones from Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp, the videos and the briefing slides and the photographs, I pushed to see what the Pentagon would designate them as because the Pentagon said, yes, they're real. Yes, they were taken by U.S. Navy pilots. And yes, they're utilized by the UAP task force. And those answers came very, very quickly. What they would not do after being pressed upon it was give a designation. Do they know what they are? Are they unidentified? Are they UAPs? Are they balloons? Are they drones? Are they classified tech? Nothing. They wouldn't comment on that. And I feel that that is part of a bigger story that has yet to be written yet, that they will not comment on the designation of those. They did on the FLIR gimbal and go fast, but everything that came out after and leaked out after, they won't touch. What does that mean? I mean, I have a couple guesses, but I just wanted to throw that out there that, that I think those aspects of this story plays a much bigger role. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to take up all your time here, but uh, you mentioned, though, I, and I hear this a lot. Everyone talks about uh, people being read in or briefed in. And I'm wondering, you know, who are these people that are doing the briefing? You know, because a lot of people talk about, oh, well, this president wasn't read in or this person wasn't read in. Well, who's in charge of that? Who's in charge of the government and reading these things into people? Because it seems like if the president isn't read into these UFO programs, then there must be some sort of, quote unquote, shadow government operating behind the scenes. I mean, well, what's going on there? 
Yeah, I mean, I think the people that are doing the briefing are the ones that are not elected officials. They're not appointed officials. Rather, they're people behind the scenes, military brass, those cleared for whatever knowledge there is to be gained from this phenomena. They're cleared to see it, understand it, and even you know write about it and, and brief others about it. Uh, I've dug through the, the Navy uh, archives of emails and tried to trace around to who was involved. Uh, and so I've got some articles on the Black Vault. I'll, I'll after this stream, r somebody remind me to uh, dig the, that link up, but I'll be more than happy to post it for you. But essentially, you you can see some of the names that, again, you don't see every day in the press, uh, if if at all, uh, that were the ones that were involved in crafting the UAP related statements. If I were a betting man, which I am. I would say that those are the people away from the spokespeople. Those are the people. Those are the individuals that are responsible for the briefings. And again, it's people that are not doing press conferences every day. They're not elected officials. They're not speaking to the general public. They're working behind the scenes. And when it when it's appropriate and they do the briefing, Marco Rubio uh, comes in, Mark Warner comes in, they get the briefing from individuals like that. And then they come out of their classified briefing and, you know, don't tell anybody anything what they heard. But I think that that's uh, that that's what you're talking about. Right. Yeah. So, hey, thanks uh, so much for your call. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you, John. Thanks for taking the call. You're, you're awesome. Appreciate all the work. I appreciate that. You take care of yourself and definitely call in in the future. I appreciate it. Take care, John. You as well. And uh, so thanks for your patience, everybody. I'm getting lots of questions. So these are always exciting, especially as the channel grows and, and the audience number grows. I want to go back to the chat room on a super chat. This is from Waldhammer uh, coming in. And uh, I really appreciate your support on that. So thank you. Uh, your question posted in uh, the super chat saw a great question in chat earlier, and I wanted to make sure you saw it. Have you ever submitted a FOIA on yourself and what has come up if so? Great question. And the answer is yes. Uh, a couple years back, and I've done this a couple times, and it's uh, funny, actually. I mean, when you request on yourself, essentially, you're probably talking about an FBI file. Uh, the FBI has been known to watch organizations, people, w you know, and, and what they're doing. I am officially on, and this isn't a joke, I'm officially on what's called a Vexum list on the FBI. And what that means is, is that I am annoying as heck. <laughs> if you don't know what the word Vexum means, uh, there is a very small list of individuals, but more so organizations that essentially are the problem childs of the FOIA world. Those that can, uh, I've heard a couple different reasonings, those that can garner media attention for their FOIA request, those that can uh, write and get a lot of reach, uh, so if they release something of importance, this small list of people can create an issue, uh, essentially a PR nightmare. And so that that they've created internally a list of of what they call Vexum requesters or Vexum people. And I'm one of the few actual individuals that's listed versus organizations. So you see some of the bigger media outlets that really push uh, for stories. So I, I do know that I'm on that list. But I have requested a file on me uh, where, you know, if they've been either watching me or they have some kind of whatever behind the scenes, one of the quicker responses I ever got from the FBI and they said no. So uh, it, does it seem plausible that I don't have any type of file, but I'm on this Vexum list? Quite possibly. Uh, who knows? I, I really don't know. But regardless, that's uh, what the FBI has said. So um no file on me, but I definitely annoy the heck out of that agency. Uh, interesting side note, the IRS has, uh, actually has their own Vexum list. They don't call it that, but uh, they as well kind of keep track of who can create a problem uh, for that agency, essentially through FOIA and the attention that their releases can get through certain outlets or through certain individuals. I'm on that list as well. So I'm hopefully never never get audited because they hate me so bad. Uh, so I haven't gone through that yet, but uh, they do have these internal problem lists and uh, it's a badge of honor. I'm on a couple of them. Dan James, Dan, thank you so much for that super chat. Let me read it all together here for the first time. Lieutenant Ryan Graves indicated both he and other pilots were seeing UAPs on a daily basis for years. So is, 
is this reports number of 120 instances seem a, a little light and a deliberate downplay? So that's a great question. That 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 would to me was the biggest revelation out of the New York Times recent article about the UAP report. Now, God bless the New York Times and all the journalists that come along with that, but if you watch this channel, I've harped on their reporting in the past simply for their inaccuracies. And you don't need to take my word for it. You can take the word of their corrections that they've been forced to post on a couple of their claims. So if there is truth to this, right, and their article of 120 cases that the UAP task force has investigated or looked into, if there's truth to that, I'm, I'm excited because that to me uh, is a much bigger number than I thought. Does it seem light? Well, again, it's it seems heavy to me uh, that they're acknowledging that much. But based on the testimony of Ryan Graves and what he has said, uh, he seems like a very cool guy. I've talked to him a couple a couple times. And no reason to doubt what he is saying uh, at all. But the, if they were having these encounters every day for a couple years, to me, it seems like that's a huge story. And that we should have been made more aware of that at this point, or that there should be more material available at this point. I don't know what to think of that at the end of the day. I truly don't. But it's like when stuff like this happens in in bulk, right? And, and you have so many different encounters, and that's a lot of pilots, right? I don't think that that's like four or five pilots flying around the same waters for a couple of years. My guess is you have a much larger list of names of men and women, um, and, and truly God bless them for their service to this country, but you've got a longer list of the men and women that have been flying in and around that area, or uh, the radar operators, or the ship personnel that are out on deck with their field binoculars and see something in the sky, or fill in the blank. There's a lot of people that would be involved in something like that, and we only have a handful of people that are speaking about it and a very small amount of quote-unquote leaked photographs and, and, and videos, essentially. So when you have something that's happening that prevalently, I would think at this point we would see more of it, or at least I would hope so, and we haven't. Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean that, that Ryan Graves is wrong. I'm just saying I'm surprised that more has not come out. So uh, if and when that happens, I, I hope it does. Um, we'll see. But uh, but those are my thoughts on that. Another super chat. BN, any thoughts on Jeremy Corbell leaks? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I've got some thoughts. Uh, first of all, I don't like anonymous sources and I don't like leaks. Plain and simple. Uh, I've always been that way for... 25 years, I've run the, the Black Vault. Uh, I've gotten myself in trouble with some people when I speak out against leakers and whistleblowers that bring out potentially classified information or definitely classified information. Uh, I think that's a problem. So the issue um, aside, what intrigues me about Jeremy's stuff is uh, the fact that the government has quickly acknowledged that it's real. Uh, that it's quickly being acknowledged, it's utilized by the UAP task force. So the question mark is why? Why with that, and I'll go back to what I pulled in uh, five, 10 minutes ago with a caller, why won't the government say that they're unidentified? So all that stuff that's coming out of Jeremy and George, uh, and, and kudos to them for bringing it out because it's being confirmed by the Pentagon, why is it that the Pentagon will not comment on the designation? And I don't know why why that is. It will not surprise me if we see these leaks in the UAP task force report and being used as essentially examples of stuff we can identify. Now, I can absolutely be wrong on that. That's a guess. And if it's not in the report and that doesn't happen, I guarantee some people will, you know, harass me on social media going, ah, you said that this would be you know, in the report uses a primer. Again, that's just speculation and a guess. But I do believe the fact that they did not designate this yet is part of the story. Here's another aspect to it on why I say that. A lot of times a designation, uh, it has the potential for being classified. So when you talk about the gimbal, FLIR, and go fast videos, the designation officially is confirmed as being UAP. 
So they consider unidentified aerial phenomena are depicted in those videos. That tells me as a researcher that the designation of UAP is not a classified designation because those can exist. So the, the, the fact that they will label something UAP and we can prove it shows that it is not uh, classified. So what happens now is why won't they on this other stuff? Because we can rule out, well, it's not a classified issue. It's not, not designated top secret or secret or whatever. So why won't they do that? And the question mark remains. Uh, so we will see as time unfolds. I've had, I've had a caller here on hold uh, from Phoenix. Uh, and so I apologize you were on hold there for a while. Who's this? Oh, no problem, sir. Uh, Mr. Greenwald, uh, thank you very much for having me on. My name is Ivan. I'm from Gilbert, Arizona. Hey there. How are you? I'm doing pretty well, sir. Thank you. So um, I'll try to make my point, uh, my points actually kind of quick, and then I'll move on because um, I know you're busy there. Um, so uh, Mr. Greenwald, it's quite obvious to me um, that this phenomenon, there's something to it, right? I mean, you have all these... Um, witnesses and whistleblowers and things that we've seen particular people in the military and even before that i hate i hate to interrupt you you're really breaking up uh oh, okay so i guess can you hear me now i can yeah okay so i'm just going to make my point and then i'll leave Sir, I think at this point, we basically have no choice. I think that if, if people are going to start taking this seriously and, you know, like the media has already kind of put this behind the, you know, it, it looks like they moved on to the next story, correct? So I think one of our whistleblowers is going to have to release some real, real clear footage, something that people, that's completely un undeniable. I understand that sometimes, you know, this might be, I mean, I'm not condoning it, but I think this is so important that somebody has to basically put their freedom on the line. There's no other choice. Um, you know, the government's never going to tell us the truth. They have been, they've been hiding this for 20 plus years. They won't even tell us the truth on the origins of the virus. What makes you think they're going to tell us the truth about UFOs for it? You know, they're never going to tell us the truth, ever. Um, so that's the only way, you know, and I think this is something big enough that, you know, the world is crumbling and collapsing and it's, you know, it's a story like this that will unify the whole world. Um, I just don't see any other future, to be honest with you, without this being exposed and, um, everything else. I mean, it's just, I think it's time for us to, somebody has to stick their neck out, you know, yeah. for the truth. No, I, I, I got you there. So let me, uh. I'm going to answer your question here. I'm only going to disconnect it uh, just because of the, the audio. So I'm going to apologize to you. I'm not trying to cut you off. No, it's okay. uh, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can get off the line now. Yeah, no, that, that was just my main point, sir. No problem. And, and I appreciate your call. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry the connection wasn't uh, ideal uh -oh. uh, on my side. But yeah, so, okay, sir. yeah so, so thank you for your call. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, really quickly, what, what I had uh, gleaned from that, because I know it was a little bit uh, challenging to hear, was the government is never going to tell us the truth. And essentially, we're going to need somebody that really does blow the whistle and come out and, and tell us the, the, the real information. That is a very interesting uh, uh, aspect to this that a lot of people don't realize or deal with. And the reason is, is because number one, uh, the government has lied and has lied for quite some time, right? Like nobody can uh, hide from that. It is the most easily provable cover up in my opinion. And I've dealt with every government secret over the last 25 years and, uh, UFOs is the most challenging. So why is it in 2021 that some people think, aha, this is it. We're going to have finally the truth. This is disclosure. This is they're, they're going to reveal secrets that, that have uh, been maintained for decades. I'm not sure why people are so hopeful of that. Nothing has truly shifted that would make them do that. There's been a shift to make them acknowledge it, but that's a lot different than them coming clean. And I think that that, for me anyway, is one of the bigger aspects to this story that nobody is realizing. The same people that are really rooting for this report to come out are the ones that never believe the government anyway. So how can those things go hand in hand? 
if on one hand you say the government lies all the time, and on the other hand you're saying, aha, this is it, they're going to come out and tell us the truth finally, and this is going to be disclosure, how is that possible? We don't, we don't, there, there's a huge disconnect there. So that's why I'm, yeah, optimistic to see it. But I said on a show uh, yesterday where I was being interviewed and we talked about this and I'll bring it up again, where I'm more interested in the background. How did that report get made? Who was talking about it? What are those 120 cases? Because you know darn well that 120 of them are not going to be in there. So what are they? And, and so that's what I'm going to go after the moment that that report is released you could bet your bottom dollar I'm going to have 3,500 FOIA requests uh, filed by midday whenever that happens. So uh, again, going back to the caller's question, I think that there's a big issue that a lot of people don't deal with. I, I don't see a shift that they're going to come clean. The shift at this point is only the acknowledgement that the phenomena, whatever it is, is real and warrants something new and more. So we'll see, you know, again, what happens when this report comes out. But I would just tread carefully. That's my biggest advice for everybody is tread carefully, because, again, who's to say that they're not going to be either lying through their teeth or 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 what and continue what has been going on for decades. And that's not conspiracy talk for those that are maybe new to this topic. That is provable by the evidence that the U.S. government will give you. So that cover up that I talk about that's so easily proven, that is only using their own evidence. No leaked material, no secret insider information, no anonymous sources. That is all through the Freedom of Information Act. And there are thousands and thousands of pieces of paper that I can show you, some declassified uh, in full, others are still classified to this day. But that all tells a story that there is a major, major cover up here. Let me go to the super chat again make sure I am not missing anything. So again, guys, I'm sorry, the chat itself is really hopping. There's, uh, I'm showing more than 400 of you all in the chat room right now watching this live. So that is awesome. So thank you for that. So there's no way I can watch that chat. What I can see because they're gigantic squares on my uh, monitor over here are super chats and those really, really stick out makes it helpful. So uh, that's why you're seeing me prioritize those uh, because they're very, very helpful to the channel. Uh, but obviously I can see them. Have you seen the My UFO Propulsion version 4.0 theory posted on Reddit? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, so Dark Orse, so no H on there. I was expecting an H. Dark Orse, uh, thank you for that super chat. And man, I wish I had a better answer for you, especially since you're supporting the channel. I'm not familiar with that. I do, uh, I do uh, traverse Reddit from time to time. You'll see my posts on there, and I, I like to uh, just kind of lurk and see what's posted there. But I'll be honest with you, if that was something the last day or so, I have been totally off of Reddit uh, for the most part. So I did not see that. So, man, I'm really sorry I don't have a better answer for you. But I will look into that and uh, drop me an email. Uh, all of you can, but it's just very simple and straightforward. John at theblackvault.com, and I will uh, definitely get to that. So before I get to the caller, there are so many text messages that have come in. Let me see if I can bang out a couple of these uh, as, we, as we go here. Give me one second. Hey, John, just wondering, have you been paying any kind to the attention that China has been giving to UAP stuff lately? Been seeing rumors that they are taking it all very seriously and want to bring up the issue in the UN. Do you believe that this is pushing a more transparent government at all? Thanks for all you do. Uh, thank you for the text message. Uh, in short, yes, I'm following it. I, I do believe that other countries, especially world powers, are seeing the uh, seeing the interest in the UAP phenomena and also the potential concern of a security risk. And uh, it also could be it also could be strategic on their end. And let me explain that in a second. But I think that they're probably seeing all of that information come to light. Uh, they're realizing that citizens uh, on a global scale are likely concerned that if it is not um, China or Iran or Russia or even America, who are they? So the times we live in are a big concern to general uh, citizens, uh, citizens around the world. So I think that, that they would essentially have to or be forced to look into that a little bit. 
In the same respect, what if they are Chinese, right? There's a big question out there. What if they're Russia or China? Uh, and some have said, no, there's no way that it's Russia or China. Well, let's just play a strategic intel game for a second or counter intel game uh, in that. What if they are? So the prime way to deter people from looking at you is to say, yeah, we got no idea what these things are either. And in reality, they're they're Chinese drones or whatever. I'm, I'm not betting my my house on that, by the way. So please don't think that that's what I'm saying. I'm throwing out the idea and concept that from a counterintelligence perspective, it plays a value to say we have no idea what these things are when in reality they're theirs. And that same tactic is true for us. And we can't forget that. Even though the government says that they won't lie about classified tech, that they may say we can neither confirm nor deny or whatever, there is potentially a value to give the aura that they're clueless. Yet in reality, it's their own technology. Again, not betting my house on it, but it's something that we have to consider till we can't anymore. I'll get to more uh, text messages. Here's another super chat one. Galactic Beat, Galactic Beat, thank you so much for your support of the channel. Keep hearing about a large black triangle ship coming out of the water with exceptional quality video, possibly from Navy 2019. Have you heard of this? Can you speak more? Galactic Beat, I only laughed because it is a great question and it's one that's frustrating and here's why. There are so many rumors out there, and this is one of them, where people talk about or make claims using only anonymous sources. And again, I've said it in this stream and on this channel many times, Anonymous sources are so frustrating because you can't verify or authenticate anything. You are simply left with either the blogger or the journalist's um, promise that they vetted the anonymous source. But how do we know? You know, and I'll use the New York Times and sadly throw them under the bus because they've earned it uh, in their reporting in the past. And they even named their source of Harry Reid, saying that he said that that uh, he believed the background with some of these crashes uh, was that they were off world vehicles, essentially insinuating they were aliens. The New York Times later retracted that. So how do we know, right? That's the New York Times. That's not Joe Blow's blog anymore. Uh, that's the New York Times. And yet they are forced to, to retract and, and correct statements like that. That's a huge thing to, to say uh, to a former gang of eight Senate majority leader and attribute, hey, we're seeing off-world vehicles, uh, phew, that doesn't that doesn't compute with me that a major mainstream outlet like that would make that mistake, yet they do. So my bigger point with pointing that out is how do we know then these smaller outlets or these blogs that often tout anonymous sources are either being truthful or not being misled themselves? This triangle photo from everything that I know about it, and please correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, but everything that I've known about it is, yes, it's a rumor. Yes, people are bantering about it. And I think you even have one or two people that have hinted that they've seen it or whatever. Yet they can prove nothing at this point. So until we see it, to me, I guess it doesn't exist. <laughs> because in, in the grander scheme of the UFO world uh, for decades, we've heard these rumors, most of which don't pan out. So I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy about it because it is a great question. I'd love to see that. But you're talking about something that at this point has no supporting evidence that any of us can verify. Uh, and so that take that for, for what it's worth. Um, let me make sure there's no one there. Okay. And, and I apologize yet again. Uh, the caller been hanging there for quite a while, and I appreciate you doing that. Uh, who's this? Hi, John. This is Joe and uh, from Ohio. Hey, Joe from Ohio. Thanks for calling, and I'm so sorry that you were on hold there for a while. What can I do for you? No, I appreciate you taking my call. Um, I'm going to try to be brief uh, uh, just to be respectful of everyone else's time as well. But uh, I, my question does have a slight bit of buildup to it. Uh, so I don't know how familiar you are with like Dr. Halp Putoff and uh, Dr. Eric Davis, um, but it seems as though recently there's been some interesting comments made um, by uh, Lou Elizondo in both his Richard Dolan interview and uh, also in uh, Tucker Carlson about crash retrieval and then hasn't really gone into much detail on it, just stated it. 
Um, but in any case, it was after he did that on Tucker Carlson that uh, Dr. Eric Davis, who is you know, a faculty member at uh, Baylor's uh, physics department, he came out and stated that Lou's assertions were 1,000% correct, but that he couldn't comment further because of NDAs. Now, obviously, people making comments isn't the same thing as actual proof or evidence, um, but it is interesting that all of these comments are coming out at the same time, and I guess within the last couple of days, uh, Mr. or Dr. Uh, Putoff had also confirmed that the uh, special national intelligence estimate from 1961 that was like supposedly about crash retrieval that had been leaked was in a, was actually a leak. I'm still skeptical myself because it was, it, you know, this is the whole MJ-12 type conspiracy theory that has been out there for a long time. But I was yeah. wondering if you would be willing to comment on that. Maybe I, I know you've given thoughts on it in the past, but does any of the new... I mean, it probably doesn't change your opinion at all, does it? I mean, until we have actual evidence besides commentary. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say that it it doesn't, um, you know, change my my theory at all just because I want to be a skeptic or debunker. There's just no evidence of it. And in fact, on this channel, I've done a video on that uh, uh, NIE that put put off has hinted at that was real because he made a comment in a speech a couple of years ago about it. If that truly is confirmed that that's what he's referring to, I mean, I, to, in my opinion, I believe that NIE is a, is a hoax uh, and, and not real. And that's what's kind of worrisome about some of this. The other thing, too, and, and I've talked to Dr. Putoff, and I mean no disrespect to him or, or, or anyone really. But the problem is, is that when you do end conversations like this in questions where they say, you know, we, we have an NDA or security clearance and we can't talk about it. It makes it really challenging, you know, to confirm anything. And the other thing is you see a lot of the same names and a lot of stories and stories that have survived even well before ATIP, uh, some of which are highly controversial. Look at how Dr. Hal Putoff's, you know, um, connection or alleged connections to Project Serpo and stuff like that. Stuff that is, again, really not holding any true weight of, of legitimacy. Uh, you had mentioned Dr. Eric Davis. Um He's one that I'm sorry to say has also been caught disseminating false information in in a public domain, which I tried to respectfully point out, and and he didn't like that very much. Uh, but I feel that it needs to be pointed out, and I, I don't know what it is. I'm talking about broad strokes now, not anybody in specifics. But I'm not sure if people like that in that group and that world and people that have worked in classified tech and stuff like that, if they like the aura that they are just more read in than they really are, uh, you know, are they into that? I, I don't know. I really don't. But it seems to me that that is an impression that I get. These leaked documents, again, there's just no indication that they are real. Uh, and when this off-world vehicle talk came and then you've got the Wilson Davis documents floating around. There's so much mud that has been thrown in the water. It's a shame because if there truly is material that has been retrieved from UAP, meaning a craft of, of uh, you know, a, a highly advanced, I'm trying to get my words careful here, but if, if they receive something from a highly advanced piece of technology that they deem as a UAP, I just don't think that people would even be walking around talking about it or even hinting about it because you're talking about something that would be highly classified in nature and the mere existence of it would be something that anybody with a high classification wouldn't touch it. They, I just don't see it. I mean, how many people, and this is a rhetorical question I'll throw out there, how many people were out there hinting that they were working on like the B2 stealth bomber or the F117 before they were ever officially acknowledged. I'm not aware of any that were out there hinting and go, getting pressed with questions and then they go, oh, "I've got an NDA, I can't talk about it." No, those men and women were behind the scenes. They weren't talking about anything. And so that's where I think history plays a very important role when you try and decipher some of these leaks and uh, the Bob Lazar like stories and even Bob Lazar himself. I'm sorry, there's people that have leaked true classified information, and where are they? They're either in jail or hiding in a hole, literally. You know, support them or not, 
uh, you can't hide from the fact that they're in jail or hiding in some embassy somewhere or in a hole. So you can look at history on true classified information coming out and what happens to the person. But in the UFO realm, it's like people can walk around and hint about stuff and even outright claim stuff and nothing ever happens to them. People made claims that Bob Lazar's history was erased and stuff like that. But we don't we don't really see true evidence that 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 happened, you know, and you dig into these stories, you see that a lot. So I hope that wasn't too long winded, but I answered your question. And, and again, I'm not trying to be a, a negative Nancy skeptic about it. It's just it's so hard with these leaked documents and claims to, to verify it all. No, I totally understand that. And I know you've done uh, an immense amount of work you know, digging into a lot of these stories and, uh, you know, providing a very thoughtful analysis on it. So I appreciate you for doing that. Um, and thank you for taking my call. Oh, anytime. And I, I really appreciate it. I hope that answered your question, but thank you. Yeah. All right. So there is a super chat question, hot sauce. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, donation to the super chat. Are you scheduled for any upcoming events or recommend any? Uh, so COVID has obviously been a challenge for everybody, more so for me. Uh, watchers of this channel know my wife uh, works in a COVID unit. Now, knock on wood, uh, the census in COVID units nationwide are very much down uh, at, the, at this point. So things are kind of turning around. So I hope that that stays true. But it's made appearances very, very difficult as the world open, opens back up. I've had to turn a couple down uh, just simply because of scheduling. Uh, but man, I am eager to get back out there in the physical world uh, lecturing. It's one of my most favorite things to do. Uh, but for now, I don't have anything scheduled just because uh, I've had to turn a couple appearances down and uh, it comes down to scheduling. But as again, census looks good in, in COVID numbers, my wife's schedule won't be too insane. I've got two children, a seven year old and a two year old, which are two monster challenges uh, in my life. Uh, but that aside, yeah, I am definitely interested in getting out there. So for now, anyway, scheduled in the digital world right here on the YouTube channel. So hopefully that will um, answer some of your question there. Uh, let me get some chat, chat text messages here. Where might leaks to Corbell and Knapp be coming from? What might be the purpose? Can we absolutely be sure it's coming from the U.S. government and not someone on the outside, possibly even foreign? Uh, all great questions, none of which anybody has the answers to, probably other than uh, Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp. In my opinion, uh, why the government is uh, talking about this so quickly is something that is of big interest to me. I've mentioned it already in this video. I won't go over it again. But the speed that they have essentially been doing this, uh, confirming these leaks, I think is very intriguing. When it comes to the UAP task force, I think Christopher Mellon is the one that's gone on, essentially on the record and posted out there. It's incredibly underfunded and there's very few people involved. So if this is coming from the UAP task force, my I would imagine that the list of suspects of those that would be the leaker, so to speak, would be very, very small. Or are are these just readily passed around to Navy personnel and one of those people were the ones that leaked it, which then again would essentially make now the suspect list go from very small to very, very big. I, I'm not really sure what the answer is. I don't have any insider information on where Jeremy or George uh, gets these leaks. I, I'm not sure. I just have guesses. I'm just more interested in the government's swiftness confirming the authenticity. One other thing to point out is that they have, the Pentagon has, a couple months ago, denied that they were investigating the leaks, right? So they said no, which was very intriguing to me. Why wouldn't you? Even if they're unclassified, they're still likely considered for official use only. So why would they just not care? You know, those those pieces of, of evidence would need to be um, reviewed prior to release. So they don't care. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I asked the Pentagon again and said, you know, here's more stuff that you guys are just, you know, quickly confirming. I've got to ask again, you know, is, is there any type of investigation? Now they're dodging the question. So I think that that was a roundabout admission that, yes, they are concerned about this, that they are looking into it because 
let's face it, it's a concern. These can be balloons or drones, whatever terrestrial explanation skeptics want to put on it. But regardless, if they're being utilized by the UAP task force in classified briefings, then there are potentially those that have a security clearance that is extracting, albeit an unclassified element, extracting something from the report and then sending it out there into the ether for everybody to look at. Uh, that would be a concern because if they'll do it with a UAP balloon photo, again, I'm being facetious there with with a skeptical label on it. But if they're going to be willy nilly about that, who's to say they're not going to do it about something else that's even more sensitive. So it wasn't surprising to me that they did a shift in tone. Uh, let me do a couple others. Would you be willing to share your thoughts about Daniel Sheehan and his planned meeting with the IG next Wednesday? Uh, look, I'd, I'd love to to pick Danny's brain a little bit more on that. I, I'm very intrigued by the IG investigation or rather evaluation versus investigation. I've heard rumors there are two others. I think Danny himself has also said that, that they are investigating, you know, the treatment of Luis Elizondo. Politico reported that there was a 64-page complaint that was submitted. Um, other than what's been reported publicly, I wouldn't have anything to add to it other than Behind me, there's popcorn popping because I'm super intrigued on how all of that will turn out and what essentially will become public because there is a lot involved in that. Not right now, but there's a lot involved in that process that will be FOIAable in the future. And although I did go for the 64 page report or excuse me, complaint. Uh, that was submitted by Luis Elizondo and his attorney, it was denied under what's called Exemption B-7. B-7 is essentially an open law enforcement investigation or uh, information that could potentially involve a law enforcement um, proceeding. Essentially, since the IG is, that uh, sounds a little bit more sinister than it really is. Essentially, since the IG is still open with their evaluation and potentially an investigation into the Luis Elizondo issue, uh, then all of that is going to be exempt. Once they close that investigation, fair game. Let me do one more and then I'll hit the, the phone because I know you guys are holding on there a while. Do you believe Bob Lazar's story about him working out on his, uh, on these, okay, um, essentially his off-world vehicles? Do I believe Bob Lazar? Uh, to be honest with you, no. I don't. Uh, my my good, good, good dear friend of more than 20 years, the late Stanton Friedman, I know really dug into that. Uh, and I would I would relinquish to a lot of his work. Uh, he did. He did great work. He, he's somebody that would pick up the telephone uh, and physically go places to confirm the claims of Bob Lazar versus, you know, do some Google stuff. Uh, and 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 make some theories. So he really dug in. Uh, I have as well, but to a point, and I saw enough to say, look, you know, there's no way that this guy uh, would have access to that type of technology and, and information and then just be able to go to some affiliate station in Las Vegas, even in silhouette, talk about it, then reveal his identity and then continue to talk about it. And nothing ever happens. Um, and, and for stories to be embellished over the years, I know that a lot of people think he was raided for uh, potentially they were looking for element 115. We know that that's not true. Uh, sadly, it was just kind of spun that way. So there's a lot of when you dig in, there's a lot of those types of things that just aren't true. And and uh, did he work on classified uh, technology? Yeah, p potentially. It wouldn't surprise me. Did he have a government contract? Yeah, pot potentially. It wouldn't surprise me. Did he work at Los Alamos uh, as a contractor? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. But seeing alien spacecraft and, and so on and so forth in a hangar, I just don't see that he would be able to uh, get, get away from it. Uh, so here's another one. And I read these on the spot. So apologies. Uh, hey, John, Mike from Philly here. Thanks for all you do. Love your tenacity. My question is thoughts on Lou being a kinder, gentler, gentler Richard Doty. I'm on the fence with him. Just seems like he's tossed out there to relate to the every man. That's all someone you could have a beer with type guy. Something just doesn't feel right. That's all just just asking for your thoughts on that. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you for the question. So in short, I mean, my history with Luis Elizondo, obviously, I'm one of being very skeptical of any claim. Uh, I did not single him out uh, for anybody who's watched the Black Vault for a long time. 
Uh, that's how I've been. I, I've, I'm, I always question. I question everything. That's the right way to do it because the truth will survive scrutiny. Somebody told me that on Reddit a couple of years ago, uh, and that has stuck with me because, you know, some people just don't want those questions asked, the, the very difficult questions. And so what they want is is essentially just leave people like Luis Elizondo alone, let them come out to tell his story and so on. Don't rock the boat. For me, that that Reddit comment was was resonated so much to me uh, and within me, because it's like no matter what I or notable skeptics or debunkers or, or whomever throw at claims or people or cases or photographs or videos. So, again, I'm broad strokes here. Uh, but whatever people that are skeptical throw at cases like that or claims, if on the other end it is true and there's truth to it, then nothing what they do or say or ask or whatever will break that. Nothing. Nothing. And in the process, if you're solidifying that truth, to me, that's a good thing. And and I and I I I, I support that. Meaning I, if if I make a claim. And I do a video and you guys go, wow, that really happened. Challenge it. Challenge me. That That's what I'm here for because I want to be challenged. I want people to question what I put out there because when you research it and go, wow, is Greenwald really being truthful here? And, you know, you guys do whatever research you, you need to do. And then it, you confirm it and you realize the document was obtained from the CIA or this document was declassified from the NSA or whatever it is. It reinforces it. So nothing you as a skeptic that threw at me could negate that particular claim. That's how I operate on my end. When I see those claims and when I see people make claims or put information forward, I challenge it because at the end of the day, uh, nothing that I do or anyone else for that matter can ever derail the truth. So I apologize to you. I know you've been on the phone for a little bit here. Uh, who's this? Uh, this is Clay. Hey, Clay, thanks for uh, calling in. And I do apologize again. Uh, obviously, lots of questions, lots of people here. We're close to 500 people now watching. Uh, so I do apologize. But what can I do for you? Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm going to try to make make this quick, John, just just for that reason. Got a lot of people probably want to get in and, and get questions in. So uh, with, with that being said, I really wish that that you could do this at least once a week. I know you're a busy man, but I mean, just the fact of being able to you know, to get on with you, be able to run our questions by you and your answer and, and everything. I mean, that is like really a big deal. Not many people are, are actually doing that. But uh, re real quick to, to my question is that um, why do you think there isn't a lot of, I guess, um, I guess analysis of the, uh, I believe it's called the Aguila Airport uh, UFO uh, sighting. I mean, it's like great video. Um, I mean, just the things that, that the object is, is, is doing from, from, from what I can see uh, looks pretty amazing. And just one other question. I don't know if anyone ha has ever asked Lou this, and if you get a chance to ask him or if you've heard it, but, uh, but the thing is, is that has anyone ever asked him, what is the one case that made him a believer in the phenomenon? Just pretty much just said, okay, this is real. So if you've heard what that case was, you know, if you could just, you know, if you could just let us know, um, you know, but, it, you know, if you get a chance to ask him, you know, if you think that that's a good question, you know, if you can run it by him. Thanks, John. Sure. And let me ask you really quick uh, before you, if you do hang up, uh, what was the airport yeah. that you were talking about? Uh, I think it's called a, a, a Guilla Airport. Oh, uh, uh, it's in. You're talking about uh, Aguadilla? Puerto Rico. Aguadilla, Puerto Rico? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that one. I mean, th yeah, yeah. That's like some of the most amazing videos that I've seen. Yeah, and and gotcha. I just don't see a lot uh, on it. Uh, so I don't know if it's just maybe YouTube's uh, algorithm or what's going on, but for it to be so amazing, I just don't see a lot of talk about it. Sure. Uh, so two great questions. So I'm going to deal with the latter one first, simply because it's uh, easier to answer. I don't know if there's one case, although I won't be surprised if it's out there. I have not watched every interview that Luis Elizondo has done. He's done a ton. Uh, and uh, right. so kudos to him for being able to do that. So there may be an answer to that. I just don't know what it is. I know he's obviously spoken about the 2004 Nimitz uh, encounter quite a bit. But if there was a, a different case, I'm not really sure. So I don't have an answer for you on that one. 
with the Aguadilla okay. one, uh, I would definitely point you to a big report that the Scientific Coalition uh, for UAP Studies, the SCU, I had um, Robert Powell on, who was one of the co-founders of that organization, and they released a big report on the Aguadilla sighting and the video and analysis, and they, they do a great job like really digging in. So I would relinquish that question to them just for being, you know, the pros that they have really dug in deep on that. Uh, feel free to drop me an email again. It's very straightforward. John at the black vault.com. And I am happy to send you a direct link to that. Um, I'll also add it to the show notes after, after the video ends. But, uh, that being said, uh, even if you just Google it, SCU Aguadilla report, I'm sure you'll come up with it. And, and they go into great detail on that. And, and, and John, just real quick. One other thing that I, that I've noticed why why does it appear that South America uh, countries are more open about their uh, UFO sightings? I mean, for instance, like Chile and Brazil, Argentina, even I've seen some Colombia uh, sighting. It just seems like that they're more open. Do you know why? Or I, I, is that just me? I agree with you that it seems like it's a little bit more open uh, down there. And, and even the society is more welcoming to topics like that. What What is that? stemming from uh i'm not really sure but uh but i do think that there's that there's definitely something to that um that i wish i had the answer to uh, in regards to governments yeah it looks like that they as well have come out with information i know the mexican government has released FLIR video footage and stuff like that and of course the skeptics and debunkers all attack it uh but regardless if i've i've always gotten the impression that america was very very much more tight-lipped than uh, many other countries especially the um south american countries thanks john you're very welcome and thanks for your phone call a couple more text messages here uh let me go ahead and get this one why don't we just shoot one down then we will know what they are for sure well a couple thoughts on that really quickly uh who's to say we can catch it to shoot one down because it seems like they pretty much outperform everything and and everything we got and everyone up there so that uh, that that would definitely be one comment on that um the other thing is who says we haven't you know i mean that's a big possibility if we were ever to do that if we haven't already i would consider that something that would be highly classified and likely not anything that we would be hearing about uh mr bowie or bowie 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 uh thank you so much for that support has uh, in the super chat has everything in the last two years been a psyop to either cover new tech they're developing or distractions from the horrors we have seen lately i touched on that a little bit uh when it comes to classified tech is all of this a cover story i mean of course that's a huge possibility in my opinion the the effort to do that and the outcome would be worse off than if they just didn't address any of this at all, meaning leave UAPs out of it and continue to operate in, in secrecy with whatever classified tech or whatever uh, new technology that they're developing. I say that because of history. Uh, when you look at history and you look at how long Area 51 has survived and uh, and was in operation without being known by the general public or even acknowledged. You look at the classified technology that we've developed over the years. Many times things were, were secret for decades upon decades before it was ever officially acknowledged. Uh, we hear about things all the time, like these stealth helicopters that were used in the Osama bin Laden operation, uh, all of which were unacknowledged prior. They are very successful at keeping secrets when they want to. And so for me, thinking that this was all a PSYOP, I just don't buy it for that reason, just simply because history shows that if they wanted to keep it all a secret and this was covert tech or or something in development, that they absolutely could without the stain of a UAP cover up, because you look at the amount of publicity that this topic is getting and the amount of accusations that are being thrown towards the general U.S. government as a whole or the U.S. military. To me, it's just not worth it for them to create some kind of a cover story here. I would just leave it alone. Uh, here's a, here's one about the T-shirt. Love the T-shirt. I buy, bought it. A great conversation starter. Any new merchandise in the future? 
new merchandise. Love the t-shirt. Thank you for that. Yes, I have a couple of t-shirts. Uh, they are on the Black Vault store. Yes, that really is a text message. <laughs> so I'm not trying to uh, plug my merch here. Uh, but I do have a couple Black Vault t-shirts to show your support. So if you go to theblackvault.com, there's a shop link at the top. You can buy my books as well, uh, which you see behind me there inside the Black Vault. Obviously, a lot of you guys are loving the UFO topic, uh, as that seems to be a common theme on these live streams. Uh, so you might be uh, interested in, in that book as well. So thank you for that. Gave me an opportunity to give a shameless plug. Thoughts on Werner Braun, von Braun, Kennedy death because releasing UFO files to Russia. Why did Reagan ask for Russia's help in the early 80s? Wow, lots of stuff there. Thoughts on Werner von Braun? I mean, I don't know what you exactly mean by that. Obviously, uh, lots of, of history there with von Braun and, and the role he played with our uh, space program, stuff like that. But I'm not entirely sure what you're referring to. I will focus on Kennedy death because of releasing UFO files to Russia. You know, there's a lot of rumors about the Kennedy thing. Uh, sadly, there's just really nothing substantiated uh, in my mind. I believe, and this is kind of going back in my memory here, so I could be wrong, that there was a document that came out, but it was never confirmed as authentic. Uh, I know that he wanted to research UFOs, but I think that there was a claim in the in a book, and I'll have to look this up again, but many years ago that he was going to release everything. Uh, I've been to the JFK library, sifted through his documents. It's one of the most amazing things to do if you've never done it and you like documents like I do. Definitely take take a, take a day to do it. Go to a presidential library, pick a topic that you're interested in from that president and get documents. I remember I was going through UFO documents. And there's a, a pretty big box of them. I have them all on theblackvault.com. They're they're uh, literally under Pre uh, President John F. Kennedy Library UFO documents. So if you use the search um, and going through that, and I stumbled on a letter that was actually signed by JFK himself, like the, the original. Most of those uh, are pulled and photocopies are put in. Uh, these were overlooked. And I remember just sitting there for a moment and and looking at it and, and holding it going, wow, JFK actually signed this, you know, and I sat there for a moment and then I got up and I told the archivist and they ended up pulling it. Um, but amazing experience. However, going through all of those UFO documents, you realize that those types of claims are really not substantiated in what was going on behind the scenes. JFK and mostly his brother, Robert Kennedy, uh, was uh, fielding all of the questions uh, from the general public. But uh, again, although JFK expressed an interest in maybe getting some some UFO answers, uh, there was really nothing to substantiate that he was just going to blow the, the lid wide open and release all the UFO files. And I think that that was more generally to the public versus Russia, like your question said. Uh, but regardless, um, I don't think that that theory has ever really been substantiated. So let me... Hit one more super chat question, then I'm going to the phones. What is your take on the declarations from the head of Israeli space program or the Canadian former prime minister? Uh, that is uh, Philip or Philippe. And again, I apologize. I'm not sure the correct pronunciation, but that's the second support that you've given the channel uh, today. So thank you so much. Uh, what is my take? You know, it's that's what's hard uh, with claims like that. The Israeli uh, space program, um, drawn kind of a blank on his on his name. Uh, but also, I think you're talking about uh, Paul Hellier from Canada. And, uh, you know, the, I've met Paul Hellier. I haven't met the other gentleman. And they're they're very interesting claims. They truly are. Uh, but but again, it's it's not what you believe. It's what you can prove. And sadly, when individuals like that come forward, I haven't really seen like this um, amazing mound of evidence that's been put forth with them. There are more claims. Now, that doesn't mean that I dismiss them, and that doesn't mean that I think they're lying, nor does it mean that I think uh, we should ignore it. But rather, I'm just a, I'm a researcher, you know, and I need to be able to take a claim like that and try and authenticate it. And with, with what we've seen with those particular stories on what you're asking about, very hard to do that because they don't come along with a lot of evidence that you go, oh my gosh, look at that. You know, albeit it's still very interesting and it still goes on the list of really great supporting testimony. But when it comes to hardcore evidence, uh, for me, it's, it's lacking a little bit. So I hope that answered your question. Let me hit the phones. I know you've been on the phone for a while. I apologize for the hold. Uh, who's this? Hello? Did I lose you? Maybe you didn't want to hang on. I don't blame you. Are you there? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. My name is Mo and my last name is Lester. So I wanted to ask you about this Wendy's program. So have you heard anything about this program? Which program are you referring to? The Wendy's. Mm, that's not striking a bell. Wendy Imposter Vents Sus Baka Amogus 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 Sussy Baka Amogus Amogus. All right. Crank call. Should I blast that number out? He waited that long just to crank me? Oh, uh, how, how, how upsetting that somebody would wait on hold just to... I'm not even sure what he said, to be honest with you. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll get through that caller. Uh, just so you know, I have no problems taking phone numbers and blasting them out there if you decide to do that again. So we'll leave that as, as it is. Uh, let me go ahead and get a couple of text messages here. Uh, sorry, I, I'm going to tell you in advance, there's no way for me to get to these. Uh, overwhelming on uh, the support here today, and I truly appreciate it. Another caller, thankfully not the same one. All right, but uh, let me get some text messages here. I'm starting to think that these vehicles are ours. The only reason that these people are coming forward is because the government has told them to. I mean... It's, it's definitely part of that PSYOP uh, theory that's out there. Uh, again, not substantiated yet, uh, but something that that is prevalent. Uh, now, are they on some kind of uh, secret operation and under orders? I mean, that sounds conspiratorial. I can't rule it out. I mean, I'll be honest with you. How do we know that the people that have come forward don't have another agenda, you know, that they're not under orders? No, that's not, again, something that I'll bet my house on before people start lambasting me on Twitter. But again, as the way that I approach in a, a, anything is as an investigator, you deal with all possibilities until you can't. And you deal with all potential explanations until you can't. And you challenge each and every single one by drilling down on each and every single one. And until you can rule it out, you have to take it as a possibility, albeit a very small one. Now, people don't like that aspect of me, right? They'll just blindly dismiss X, Y, and Z because they don't want to believe that X, Y, Z can be true. But if you're truly trying to investigate something, you need to deal with X, Y, Z until you can't anymore. You find evidence to either support it or dismiss it. I think the scientific method is the same way, right? I mean, they, they just don't not deal with certain theories just because it's a theory and they don't want it to be true. You have to challenge it and test it. And that's what I, that's what I absolutely do with stuff like this. So is there this secret agenda behind the scenes that this is all playing into a much bigger story? It's, it is absolutely quite possible because all you have to do is not think that I'm being a conspiracy theorist and take my word for it. Rather, look at history. And history shows and proves that the general public has been misled, right? There's no, there's no way around it. You look at the CIA mind control experiments. You look at all of that stuff that they've done in the past, the Tuskegee experiments. You look at that and the general public has been lied to for the greater good. Whatever that greater good is, but they've been lied to and misled. There have been things going on behind the scenes to essentially puppeteer a narrative to the general public to ensure that you guys, me included, don't know the truth. So who's to say they're not doing that now? And until till we can prove otherwise, we have to always keep that in the back of our head. Now, I like Luis Elizondo. I'm not saying that he's part of this. I don't know Christopher Mellon, but I like what I've seen about him. These are all individuals that I would sit down and have a beer with and dinner and, and, and enjoy my evening, right? So I'm not placing that accusation, but I'm speaking in generality that no matter who comes forward, no matter what is being said, we have to challenge it and question it. Because if history has taught us anything, it's that history often repeats itself. So it may not be that people like, and again, I'm not trying to throw them under the bus, but Christopher Mellon, Luis Elizondo, and these people that have come forward, it's not that they're spearheading it, but maybe they're victim of it too. Because keep in mind, history also shows that ha that has happened with people that have come out and have set a narrative that isn't true. I'm sure you guys can think of a couple spokespeople 
that that's happened to over the years, that they as a government official are tasked to say something because that's what they're told and it is the truth. Well, at least that's what they were told. Whether or not it was the truth or not becomes irrelevant. They were told it was the truth. That all that ma- that's all that matters. So again, history shows us that we as the general public, by sometimes way of a spokesperson, by sometimes way of a press release, or sometimes way of a maybe even a Freedom of Information Act release, but it could be strategic and it can have a much deeper underlying motive on why that information is there. Again, people don't like that aspect of me. But it's something that as a researcher, investigator, whatever you label yourself, uh, I label myself as a, as a researcher, investigator. That's what you have to do. You challenge it and you just keep pushing. Just joined the stream. This was about 30 minutes ago, so I apologize. Just joined the stream. Have you seen UFO Lose channel on YouTube? The telescope night vision video footage he captures is pretty incredible. Triangle objects, 90 degree turn objects, dissipating cloaked objects. Keep up the incredible work. I appreciate the kind words. UFO Lou doesn't uh, ring a bell, to be honest with you, but I have seen quite a few different night vision triangular objects. Those are very cool. I always dig stuff like that. Uh, A lot of times it lacks context or you find it on YouTube from somebody that I, you know, there's really no way to verify it. Uh, That does, again, not meaning that it's fake. It's just a little bit more challenging to uh to research but regardless i'm not sure of that specific channel but yeah i totally dig those types of videos if you have any that you want to show me directly uh please by all means uh send them in i apologize to this caller uh on for a little bit who's this hi john this is terry from out here at the trent place in oregon hey terry from oregon how are you i'm doing well i'm kind of having a little bit of trouble putting some puzzle pieces together here okay uh with Mr. Elizondo, it would make sense that he would have had to been read into some certain classified things to do the research that he was doing. Well, when when Senator Reid tried to get ATIP the authorization to look into the quote-unquote woo-woo programs, he was denied. I can't, I can't understand with the way that Lou talks, especially about some of the temporal things that he talks about and metamaterials and so forth, where the breakdown in communication would have been in ATIP, especially if they were giving briefings. I mean, have you ever asked Lou how many classified things he had to be read into in order to do the research he was doing for ATIP? No, I haven't asked him that specific question, but I do know when it comes to classified aspects of what he was doing, uh, he will often fall back on the fact that he can't talk about it because it it would be classified. In regards to the Harry Reid letter, Um, I just did a big article about the Harry Reid letter about a month ago. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend to look into it. It's a very interesting. No, I've I've seen it. I I follow pretty much everything you do. (laughs) I gotcha. Yeah. um, So I, I, why he was denied, I'm not sure. What I found intriguing behind that story, since uh, you have seen it, this won't be new to you, but for the audience, this was the letter that Harry Reid wrote requesting uh, ATIP get SAP status or special access program mm-hmm. status, which would open up you know, a whole new uh, world to them when it came to classified information and the access to it. Uh, the, the, it was reported that he was denied. I fought for a couple of years to try and get the response letter to Reid, and there was none. Uh, so they claim that there's no records. So yeah. th- that's always so in- intriguing you, to me. The terror that you are at the FOIA office. I'm sorry, say again? I said, you being the terror that you are at the FOIA office, those people fear you. So yeah, I'm I don't sure you had them quaking in the booth when you're asking for things like that. Yeah, I I know that they don't like me too much, I'm sure. But uh, regardless, you know, the, the I was able that's to. That's why we love you, John. Yeah, thanks. I uh, I did, though, dig up other letters from Harry Reid sent that that same day, including the response letters. So it was intriguing mm-hmm. to me that the response letter for this wasn't there. But regardless, I, here's the thing. Uh, Luis Elizondo denies uh, this, and I did ask him this, but I will throw it out there. What if ATIP actually did get SAP status or something like ATIP got SAP status? And that would make a lot of this make sense. Um, but but he, in fairness, I asked Luis Elizondo that, and he did deny it, said that it didn't. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if something like this branched off into a SAP program. 
I just don't believe that they would give access to someone like Robert Bigelow and Bigelow Aerospace. And that that is a show in itself uh, on why I say that. But regardless, I, I just don't think that it would have been given to the private sector. I think stuff like that is either kept in house or if it does go to the private sector, it goes to a very small list of people uh, that um, that would be able to get a contract like that and have the clearance to such sensitive information. So. Yeah, well, Mr. Bigelow has the same problem as Senator Reid does now, that he, he tends to drop things that he's not supposed to, so that's understandable. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, John, thank you. Thanks for all the hard work that you do, and hopefully we'll be able to make a little more sense of this coming the end of the month. I'll do my best. It's A lot of it doesn't make sense to me, but I'll keep asking the questions and try and put the puzzle pieces together for you. But thanks so much for your call. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, sir. You too. All right. So thank you for that. I know some of these calls are a little bit challenging to hear, uh, but uh, I will do my best to try and translate if it doesn't uh, convey audio wise. Good. Here's a super chat question from Jack three, nine, two. Jack, your question, uh, John, what are your thoughts on people like Dr. Greer and Yuri Geller? Thank you. Wow. Two wildly different people in my book, uh, just with their approach to everything. Let me start with Yuri Geller. I mean, I, I don't know a whole lot uh, about him on a personal front. I've never met him. Uh, I know his connection, obviously, to the remote viewing program and what they were doing during the Stargate program uh, through the DIA and, and uh, that time when it was through SRI or where Dr. Hal Putoff was was involved in that. So that's really kind of my connection, whether or not he's a charlatan, you know, magician, uh, someone who has or has not the ability. I, I would love to to see him do it right in front of my eyes. And then uh, I'm the type of person that needs to see to believe. Uh, so that that's kind of how I view stuff like that. I mean, it's it's very cool to hear about. But until I personally see it, uh, who really knows? Dr. Stephen Greer. Um, <laughs> That's a tough one for me. I mean, I don't want to speak ill about the man. There's a there's a lot that he's done good over the years and a lot uh, not so much. And where I'll say the good stuff, the disclosure project and bringing forward some of those witnesses, I think was great. I think he he definitely solidified a, a part uh, of his work into ufological history that will survive for many years to come. I think that that was a very valuable project. Um, I was a very let down at some of the vetting of some of the witnesses. I remember doing an article I was asked to write for UFO magazine many, many years ago. And I started digging in and uncovering that there were some people that were mentioned that didn't want to be mentioned, uh, that they were essentially not uh, portrayed correctly uh, in in the book and that project. Uh, but again, others were, and, and the press conference was a prime example. Some of the other stuff, you know, I'm not here to talk bad about the man. Uh, I just don't agree with the approach, uh, meaning if he can summon UFOs and wants to take people out to teach them how to do it, I think something like that would uh, change mankind. And to just slap a big price tag on it to go out camping um, is something that I don't have a whole lot of respect for, just to be blatantly honest. But I'm not here to, to, to trash the man. Uh, again, that's just an approach that doesn't work for me. Uh, but if, if, if truly somebody could summon or channel or communicate or whatever it is that, that he truly ultimately claims, uh, UFOs and some alien presence, uh, give that to the world, uh, truly uh, don't charge for it because what'll happen to you in the long run, uh, will probably give you riches, <laughs> the amount of interviews and book deals and stuff like that, that will come along with it, uh, will be phenomenal. But if you just want to charge people an exceptional amount of money to go camping and tell people not to talk about it, and I hear that people are, are forced to sign NDAs, uh, it's not my deal. Uh, let me see. Another Super Chat question. And, of course, I lost it. Hold on. Apologies. Wow, the chat is super busy. Uh, good job, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, about 430 of you watching right now. And... If these numbers on YouTube are correct, it looks like more than 2,789 have come through the doors to watch at least some of this live stream. So that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Here is from Cole Borg. Cole, thank you so much for your support of the channel. I apologize if it was already addressed, but would you be able to speak to the significance of the incident known as Starfish Prime? Elizondo was asked. He said EMPs may have some significance. So I think you're talking about the 
the nuclear test. Um, I don't know what interview Elizondo was asked that. I am happy to address it for you. I apologize. I won't be able to do it now just simply because I'm not sure which interview you're referring to. John at the black vault.com is my email address. Shoot me an email. Let me know what interview I'll do it in a future stream uh, and give thoughts on it, but I'm not, I'm, I'm so sorry. Cause you're obviously supporting the channel and I want to uh, answer your question here, but I just don't have an answer for you. So I apologize. So let me get through that. It just caught my eye. Make John laugh. Say Corey good. <laughs> No, let's not. Let's not go there. All right. So this caller's been on for a little bit. I apologize. Who's this? Hey, this is Rocky. I'm out of Missouri. I'm a truck driver. I'm actually sitting in New Mexico currently. How are you doing today, John? Hey, Rocky. Thanks for thanks for calling in. I'm very, very good. Thank you. I hope you're safe out there on the roads. What can I do for you? Well, first of all, let me say thank you for all you've done on this topic. Uh, I truly believe that one day in the future you will be a, notated in history as someone who did more for this subject than just about anybody else out there. And, and uh, personally, I'd like to thank you for what you do. Well, thank you. Thank you truly for that, Rocky. I, I really do appreciate that. Uh, my comment is, is it seems to me that the the let's call it the ufo community now is has laser focused in on onto this past three years and you really you got to look at the data in aggregate you know we we have radar data that goes back to as early as at least 1952 with the dc flyovers uh you know there's not verifiable, but good reporting of gun camera footage of these things as early as World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. You know, there's more data out there than just the Nimitz and what this UAP task force has, and it seems like the community is not looking at this entire situation in, in the aggregate, and now you have the government and reporting agencies saying, oh, Russia, China. If you look at the data and aggregate of what these things are doing, going back to the Twining Memo, it's not possible that in the 40s and 50s, Russia and China had jumped that far ahead of us and that they don't control the world right now. Yeah. And I'll t see what, what your comments are as far as that goes. Sure. And again, I appreciate what you do. No, and I, and I appreciate your kind words. Thank you. So really you bring up a great point and it's one I, I touched on a little bit, but I'll touch on it again because it's important in that this phenomena is not new. And I think a lot of people that do enter the field and they think that this is relatively new and there's a handful of cases and select few witnesses. That's not true. This truly does go back to the World War II era, arguably much prior to that. But obviously with the gun camera footage, the Foo Fighters through World War II, we were seeing, you know, essentially lights out there. We thought it was uh, the Germans or potentially the Soviets, and they all thought it was us, uh, according to the story, legend and lore. So these things have been around for a very long time. Pilots have been encountering them for a very long time. And there are even files of engagements of these objects. I think I got a text message. Why don't we shoot one down? Well, there have been engagements with some of these. The Thomas Mantell case is a prime example where, uh, you know, he did engage a UFO, tried to chase it, ended up crashing and dying. So, you know, th that stuff does happen. Whatever this phenomena is, it has created these risks and potential threats, but it is nothing new. So I, I, I do appreciate that point because I think it is often overlooked especially this day and age, because it's all about 2004 Nimitz and 2015 Roosevelt and Luis Elizondo A-tip. But it, it truly does stretch back into uh, history a long way. And what I'm also very excited about is to see people like uh, Luis Elizondo start start grabbing documents from the 50s. And, and I think that the general audience sometimes thinks that that material is snoozy and boring and it's old and who cares. But, but on the contrary, it, it really solidifies that the phenomena is not only real, not only been here for quite some time, but it is something that they can not understand. And I think that that is one of the biggest, I think, overlooked aspects to this that that, again, even Luis Elizondo now is saying, hey, look, look at this document from 1950 or whatever it was saying, you know, is, is, is this proving that the Tic Tacs, whatever they are, 
have been around for well more than half a century. So I'm encouraged by that simply because I've spent 25 years digging into, you know, the thousands and thousands of files uh, that stretch back decades upon decades. So, yeah, I love that point and, uh, and I'm glad that you see it and I hope that more more people see it as well. Well, I hope so, too. And as far as, quote, unquote, disclosure, there was a memo that came out years ago. I think it was the 50s or 60s, and I don't remember the exact name of the memo. And I don't remember if it was part of the Magic 12 stuff or not that said that disclosure has to be a desensitization of the U.S. public before it happens. And if, if you really look at it, and I know it's going tinfoil hat conspiracy theory, but it really, it really fits what's happened. You know, as those numbers, those polls were done of people who believe in extraterrestrial life out there and who believe that the possibility of extraterrestrial life visiting Earth has increased over the years more and more has, quote, unquote, leaked. Yeah. And, I'll, and I'll end with that. Have a good day, John. I appreciate it, sir. You, you take care of yourself. All great yeah. points. Thank you so much. And hopefully you'll call in again. And be safe out there on the roads. All right. So thanks to Rocky. And uh, again, I hope he is safe out there. So here's a super chat. Uh, Schoolcraft, thank you so much for your support. Buy a FOIA on me. Thanks, John. I definitely will do that. Uh, all those super chat donations and everything are very, very much appreciated. They go right back into this channel. FOIA requests, even the server uh, hosting, which uh, can get <laughs> rather pricey uh, on all of that. So thank you uh, guys for all of your support. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, put that one on hold. Here's a text, a couple text messages real quick. The George and Jeremy releases are most likely trading videos for pilots. You have previously debunked the Batman balloon, but it continues to be shown training videos. That's why they won't classify them. A great point. Um, I will, I will, uh, by the way, say it was not me who debunked the Batman balloon. Rather, somebody had sent that uh, in to me. I'm not sure the true root. I believe it's somebody goes, that goes by the moniker of Isaac Coy was the true root of that. So credit to him, but also if it was somebody else, uh, then kudos to them. I apologize for not knowing the true uh, root of that. Uh, but to me, it, it really is um, spot on. And in fact, for those that haven't seen it, I, I didn't even put it in my video because I wasn't aware of it. Somebody actually bought one of those Batman balloons, tethered it to a 500 foot string, put it up well into the air and from the ground snapped pictures and they were able to snap pictures of it and show that i mean literally all, nearly identical from every little protrusion of it even a part on the bottom where essentially a string would be tied to uh, i know some people hate that theory because it's like well how can they go that high uh, again we don't know how high it was people were theorizing what it was uh, just by, based on the curvature of the horizon and so on and so forth. But if you read the original news thing, they said approximately 40,000 feet. There was, no, there was no actual evidence put forward. So until that comes forward, you know, I mean, hey, Occam's razor does apply to at least some of this. Uh, but that was an amazing experiment. So, uh, again, John at theblackvault.com. I'll link it over to anybody who cares. Um, again, text messages coming in. Uh, Dr. Greer questions. I feel like we already touched upon that. So I apologize for the person who sent that in, or maybe it was the same. Uh, uh, hey there, Tim. So John ever get anything on the Gulf breeze six, any insight? Thanks. Uh, you should do a weekly live cast. Yeah. I th I'm starting to think that just simply because the reactions to these have been great. Uh, so time permitting, I think you'll finally uh, see, see me do a little bit more of this. The uh, the Gulf Breeze six. I mean, I'm not sure if you're talking about the Gulf Breeze Florida UFO uh, photos or or like the oh, was it Ed Walters or whoever it was down in Gulf Breeze. I, I apologize for not knowing the reference there, and I'll probably feel stupid once you tell me. But feel free to to email me there. Uh, more talk about Doctor Gers. Pretty uh, popular here with the questions. Here's a different angle. Do you believe Doctor Greer and his contention that Elizondo and to the stars organization is psyops op to fund more money into black programs um to me that's overthinking i've seen that the, the greer thing i mean he's really kind of come out guns blazing so to speak uh, with accusations i've never bought on to the psyop train that 
you know, Elizondo and to the stars and DeLong potentially and so on and so forth were involved in some CIA run black op uh, or psyop. I, I know that that is uh, something that has been around for quite some time. I've never been on that train. I, I truly don't think so. Um, just simply because, let's face it, if, if they want more money for black budget programs and military, I'm sorry, they can get it. They don't need to spearhead it through a Tom DeLonge run organization talking about UFOs and building space planes. Rather, I think that they will just get money. Uh, so again, it's, it's more of a simplistic way to look at it. But let's face it, if they want it, they get it. So I think that that's something that, um, that we have to take into consideration there. I want to make sure that I got all the super chat ones. Yeah, let me let me hit the phones. I don't want you to stay on hold too long. Uh, who's this? Steven. Hey, Steven, I'm sorry you were on hold there. I'm trying to frantically keep up with everything coming in. So <laughs> that, I, that's fine. I appreciate your patience. What can I do for you? Um, so I kind of had, uh, well, I mean, three, but real quick questions. Uh, one uh, one was uh, the Nellis Air Force Base. I'm not, I'm not, I'm pretty sure that you're aware of that alleged footage that was leaked. Yeah, from, um, like the have FLIR. Have you ever gotten any footage? confirmation or any or heard anything about that? You're talking about the FLIR footage from many moons ago. Yeah. Yeah, I, I to, to be honest with you, have have not um, really received anything. I, I'll have to look back on my FOIA request. I don't recall ever requesting anything. Uh, but if I recall, and this is kind of going back in my memory bank here, there was really nothing that you could cite other than the actual visual. Like, I don't remember yeah. if there was any date to it other than like the date of release. I'll, I'll revisit that. I mean, I, I may may stand corrected there if the date was on the, the video. I just don't recall that. So, yeah, stuff like that's very hard to verify because... With the FOIA, you have to be specific enough that they know where the hell to go to. So you can't say, you know, I, I want this video declassified and then send them the video if there's really no way for them to trace it or track it. But but I'm, I'm happy to revisit it because, again, I'm, I'm going by memory there that there wasn't a date attached. But if there was, I'll see if I ever did a FOIA and, and get back to you on it. Okay. Um, and then the next question that I had is... Um... I did see on, on Twitter, uh, Stephen Greenstreet put up some videos that allegedly got leaked by, I think it was the Department of Homeland Security uh, along the border. And uh, I, I don't, uh, I was just seeing if you had gotten any confirmation or heard, maybe asked or heard anything from that. When did he post them? Um, I think it was a couple of days ago. And uh, it's alleged to be a leak from. Uh, I think it's like uh, Border Patrol or the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, yeah, this is the one that looked like an A-10 warthog. Yeah, 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 that's the one. Yeah, I, I do recall. I had to look it up myself. Uh, but, yeah, I do recall him posting this. I, I That's new to me. I haven't, I haven't seen that or, you know, uh, essentially even had time to really research it at all. But um, – his tweet was the first time that I saw that. So I wouldn't have anything to add other than, Hey, it's intriguing. I'd like to, to, to see more of it, but I have literally not spent any time trying to verify, um, verify that video. Okay. And then, uh, the, just the last question. Um, I, I did find an article, I think it was by the drive and, uh, it talked about, uh, these drones in Iran at the same period, but same time period, of whenever the Nimitz incident happened, and uh, I was just seeing if you if you had heard about that or or heard anything from that at all. That doesn't that doesn't ring a bell from the drive. So if you could uh, please email me the article, I'd be more than happy to uh, take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, I'll email it to you. Um, I, thank, I appreciate thank you, John. that. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I'll yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll email it to you. Great, yeah, I I appreciate that, Stephen. And um, y uh, just so you know, it is John at theblackvault dot com. That's my email. I welcome anybody who's watching or listening to this. Feel free to to drop me an email, and I'm happy to take a look at it. But yeah, thanks for sending that over, and thanks for your call, Stephen. Okay, thank you. Thank have you. Have a good day. Thanks you as well. All right, so a couple more chat things, and I'm gonna have to sadly wind it up here uh, pretty quick. Has it been, I guess it's already, it's already been like two hours. 
Uh, hey, John, have you had a chance to look at UAPtheory.com to make a great case for a non-terrestrial origin of these vehicles? Um, that doesn't sound familiar to me as a website that I'm familiar with. I may have seen it, but I'm happy to take a look at that. Hey, John, so glad to catch this session. You're awesome. Thank you for that. My question is, what are your feeling about the comments made by the White House spokeswoman, NASA, etc.? I know we're interested in what the Pentagon has to say, but lately several others are throwing their hands in the fire. I'm not sure what to think about it. I mean, I know NASA, NORAD, and the like have to look at these things historically, but until recently, it seems NASA has been less than forthcoming and dismissive of the subject. So you may want to rewind. I did talk about the NASA um, the question, uh, but to kind of nutshell it for you, I, I do find that that's a very interesting aspect to this. But the way that I look at it is that they were forced to acknowledge this. And if they did anything but essentially give the aura that they're taking it seriously, it would come back and bite them. So I think that they were forced to talk about it and forced to give a serious approach. Uh, what that approach will essentially conclude your guess is as good as mine, but I think that they were forced to because the seriousness by the general public and how they're taking this nowadays, uh, they they had no other choice to to uh, but to do that. Uh, but again, I go into a little bit more detail earlier in the show. Black Dread Scotland. Uh, thank you so much for your super chat. Uh, your question. How come we don't see or hear <clears throat> excuse me, any flying saucer videos or pictures? Is it because they don't exist or is it because the government hides the pictures, videos real well? Well, uh, I mean, arguably you do see them. Uh, if you're talking about official government releases, uh, those are a little bit more hard to come by. Uh, just by chance, I had posted a CIA file of all of the archived UFO photographs that they had within their holdings. Now, forewarning, some of them are silly, like lenticular clouds. And there's no context to the actual photos. So yes, some of them are easily explainable, but you'll also find flying saucer photographs in there. The other friendly caveat is it's like they use this archaic photo, photocopy machine to actually uh, photocopy them. So make sure that uh, you, know, you, you take that into consideration. But uh, there's like well over 100 of them. And these are the photos that were officially held by the CIA. The question mark is why? Uh, why did they have them? And uh, sadly, there's not a whole lot of context, but you'll be able to see some flying saucer pictures in there. It seems to me, though, that the buzzword nowadays really are like the Tic Tac, you know, and and that 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 in itself is nothing new. The Tic Tac verbiage is. But in history, they call them cigar shaped UFOs. And I think that a lot of people are missing that a Tic Tac UFO is the same darn thing as a cigar shaped UFO which cases stretch back decades and decades throughout the world. So that in itself is nothing new. The military aspect of it, yeah, that doesn't happen every day. Uh, so that's fascinating. But I think my bigger point with that is there is a big historical narrative to support that these types of objects have been around for a long time, or at least the shape of them and the description thereof. In the Project Blue Book files, and they were shown on CNN and Fox News, uh, and then I ended up just kind of showing context of where they came from, described them as a flying lozenge and a flying butane tank, because at the time, that's how they describe them. Nowadays, Tic Tac is the, <laughs> the phrase of choice. So you do see them, arguably. They're just not uh, as prevalent, of course, as that we would want them to be. Dustin Allen, thank you so much uh, for that super chat. Do you have any info on a program entitled Zodiac? I've heard it mentioned a few times, but without contact, uh, context as to what it is or why it exists. I, yeah, I saw a clip on Twitter. Um, my uh, reaction to it was a little bit of a surprise just simply because I, off the top of my head, that did not ring a bell. Again, it's one of those things because there's so many aspects and facets to this. One of you may post it in the chat and I'll miss it or send me an email. Go, hey, Zodiac is this. Well, you know, don't know about it. And then it'll ring a bell. So I'll feel like a dummy. But a lot of it, you know, again, there's so much. The Zodiac stuff just didn't ring a bell. MJ-12 obviously did. The Collins Elite obviously did. Zodiac uh, didn't. I mean, that's a serial killer, I think, to me. So it didn't really um, didn't really jive. So I'm not really sh sure what that was. Uh, but I was intrigued. That's something I saw in the last day. Uh, Engaging the Phenomenon, I believe, was the uh, show that did that. So credit to James, who runs that, that channel. 
uh, who's a very cool dude. So if you guys have not seen his channel, it's called Engaging the Phenomenon. I know he just started a podcast, uh, and I wish him all the best with that. Uh, but I believe that it was his interview with Luis Elizondo that that came out with. So uh, kudos to him, but I, I don't know exactly uh, what the reference was. So let me let me go ahead and go to the phones. Apologies on your hold time. Who's this? Hey, how are you doing? This is Paul. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. And, I, and I'm doing a little background work, and I'm hoping you can answer a few questions for me. I'll do my best. When you interviewed Lou, Mr. Elizondo, mm -hmm. were you... Were you uh, limited into the scope of your questions? No. And 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 I'll I'll stress that he never once said don't ask me X Y or Z. He was never had any stipulations. And he's an interesting guy, and there's not a lot of open source information on him. Correct. I mean he he did work for the CIA, correct? Uh, DOD. Well, that's also part of my question. The CIA and the DOD, does one answer to the other? No, they're independent, um, essentially, organizations. So the CIA is part of the intelligence community. Uh, they're not part of the Department of Defense. The Defense Intelligence Agency is under the umbrella of the DOD. Uh, but, again, two different uh, agencies there. So if, if, you were to if you were to request information from the DOD, you know, a FOIA request about Lou, and he was indeed employed by the CIA, you wouldn't get any information? Well, again, the, the, the CIA, I mean, I'm not sure if he did work with them. There's a lot of aspects to Luis Elizondo's background that are, are super intriguing to me, and that's away from ATIP and UFOs. I don't want to start any unfounded rumors here. I don't believe that he's ever said he's worked for the CIA, but again, I could stand corrected. What I do know is that, and what is provable and confirmed, is that he worked for the Department of Defense and worked for them for, for quite a few years. Uh, his job title when he resigned was the director of the National Programs Special Management Staff. I'm sorry, National Program Special Management Staff. Yeah, NPSMS. Sorry, it's a mouthful. Uh, that job title, it, it, I've been able to dig up very few things. Uh, but one aspect uh, of that job title was orchestrating SAP access or access to special access programs. And I was able to tie Luis Elizondo's office into the trial of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. And I uh, ended, ended up asking El, uh, Luis Elizondo that uh, last week when I had interviewed him. And for obvious reasons, he can't go into detail. Uh, but I'm here to, to, to back him up in the sense that I found Navy court transcripts to show what his office did. But to your point that very little is known about it, uh, that is absolutely true. Very no little is known about him and very little is known about his office. And I think that that is by design. So it doesn't matter, and I'm not pointing this directly at you, sir, but just in general, it doesn't matter what you think on UFOs or his connection to ATIP or whatever. What you can prove is that he was deeply entrenched in these classified, essentially, programs within the DOD. Uh, then the question mark comes running a UFO, what they call Pentagon secret UFO study. That's a different question, but there's a lot of unanswered elements to a story. I have read that his supervisors all gave him, you know, high, high marks. He wasn't a low-level guy, as far as I can tell. I mean, he... It sounds like the, the UFO gig, the ATIP gig, was almost like just, a, you know, an assignment. Hey, well, here we go. We need. And I'm kind of curious as to what that assignment actually is. How do you go from waterboarding, you know, the, the shake to investigating UFOs? And yeah. once again, that's only, you know, I can't, I have no information to prove that he was involved in any kind of uh, en enhanced. Uh, enhanced the information techniques yeah and i have no i have not nothing to prove that he you know he sold man pads to you know to hooty rebels yeah but once again that would it would seem to me a, a gentleman like this has has something he does this is he's not doing this because he suddenly decides 
he wants to, you know, find out if we're being invaded by Martians. You know, I, I don't, I, I don't think he gives a damn one way or the other. Yeah. Well, uh, there again, this is why I say he's very intriguing, and I've said this this part for quite some time. And there's a lot of elements that we don't know. And again, tying into Guantanamo Bay and and Gitmo, and he's admitted that now. And uh, when I first came out with that Navy transcript, I don't believe he had ever talked about Gitmo at all. And then uh, in time, you know, with the 12,000 interviews he's done, uh, you know, he's, he's come out with more of his background. And, I, and I'm here to say that there's documentation to essentially support that. I mean, I, I don't know what he did at, at Gitmo or, you know, where he was. Um, I can tell you I'm not done with that aspect of the story. So that I will say. Uh, but there's still a lot of unanswered questions. So, you know, he's, he's an intriguing guy. He really is. And, and I'm, I'm eager to, to find out more. Are you familiar with the work of the dark journalist? I am, yeah. I've been on his show a couple times in the past, yeah. You know, he, he mentioned that uh, Lou's dad was in, imprisoned in, uh, in Cuba after the Bay of Pigs. And, and I simply wanted to find out, try to confirm that. Yeah. I, you know, I have a lot of discretion every time, and I, couldn't con- I can't confirm anything on Lou. Yeah, what, here's what I will say, just just to be respectful. I don't know uh, the answer to it, and, and I don't want to, you know, I don't know uh, what the Dark Journalist channel has has said about that. So what I would recommend is maybe you, you write into uh, him uh, just simply because I, I don't know the claim and I don't want to make the claim here either uh, and mislead anybody because I, I don't know what the what the truth is behind that. I, I'll ask you just a couple more things. You know, I, I was intrigued by the fact that I personally believe he was employed by the, you know, if that, if that, the CIA. I think he was a journeyman for the CIA, and I believe he still is. Okay. I'm wondering mm-hmm. if he, I, I, can he commit a crime in oh. the course of his work if he was employed by the CIA? CIA can he commit a crime? So um, we're going to tr- we're treading into territory I don't want to go to uh, simply because I, I, I don't know of a CIA background. And I understand you're it sounds like you're doing your own research. Uh, so and there is a few postings where he, you know, he mentions bosses, his boss being, uh, you know, a director of the of the CIA. But I don't know how the timelines run up. Everything is really vague. Sure. If he was, if he was employed by the CIA and still is, can he commit a crime? Yeah, I don't want to go there because I don't know the right answer, and and I don't want to insinuate anything on him uh, either. So, wh- okay. what, I, that's fair enough. I am. Yeah, I so I and I truly, I'm not dodging your question. I just don't know the legality of it, but I don't want to insinuate that anybody is committing a crime and getting away with it. So. Um, Although I do appreciate the question, I, I just I'm going to I'm going to not not go there. Um, but that's that, fair enough. Yeah. But that said, I, I and I, mm-hmm. I I do believe that there there's some kind of ulterior motive behind the TTSA and the group of people involved. I don't think it's a you know, they're trying to get m- more money. Like you said, if they need more money. <laughs> yeah, they're just they going to basically can print it. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I they, they, they got something up their sleeve. I'd really like to know what because these are not low level people. Yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> what what? Here's my you final know? thought, and then uh, I'm gonna have to let you go just simply because I got to wrap up the show. I, and, I know, I know. Yeah, I but my final thought on the the TTSA thing, and again, I I I feel anyway over the last few years, some have overthought their involvement. I I truly think that at the root of it, it was a corporation. They were trying to raise fifty million dollars, five zero, fifty million. That was their intention. Yep. And they wanted to essentially compete with the Elon Musks and the Richard Bransons of the world. Uh, get into the really? space race, so to speak. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm I won't chastise that. But I think that 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 has to be taken into consideration that a motivating factor for them was potentially financial. 
And, and it wasn't for the greater good. It wasn't about bringing UFO information out. It was creating a business. Now, that's not conspiratorial, uh, but rather something that you have to consider when you have these types of players that, yes, have a intelligence agency background and some were CIA and stuff like that uh, all coming together. I'm sure they weren't all doing it out of the good graces of their heart. I, I mean, that that's not that's not demeaning them in any way, but rather that is the reality of how today works. You know, uh, that 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 is what I believe was the original intent. But they fell far short of that 50 million mark. They felt far short of the goals that they set forth. Uh, they've now fracked. they got like two million dollars. Right. Something. It was Correct. a little over two million from what I understand. And and obviously the the key players, some of the key players have branched off and one took a, another job in the private sector and so on. So I think that if you were really talking about the goodness of your heart uh, being the main motivating factor, none of that would have happened. But rather, look, everybody's got to pay the bills. I got to have a job. You have to have a job. Everybody's got to have a job. So I think that 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 a lot of people have overthought the TTSA involvement, in my opinion. Well, um, well my last point, I, I got to think if it was indeed financial, you know, $50 million to Mr. Mellon is a rounding error. Correct. But but again, right. the, the but there's a missing element. I'm, I don't mean to step on you. The missing element, though, is you have to t you have to take into consideration what would they have done to that $50 million? They wouldn't have capped it. Uh, rather, that was sure. the initial investment money that they would then take to turn it around, create whatever it was they were going to create and make that f 50 million into 500 million, you know. And, and so there was there was a bigger intent with that. And, and it was just essentially planting the seed. Now, I'm also not saying that Christopher Mellon would be top of my list that would be motivated by money. He truly does strike me Correct. as someone who's genuinely out there pushing this issue because he's genuinely concerned about it. Uh, so again, I wouldn't put him on that list. But in fairness, I think some of the other people involved in that would be on that list that were more potentially motivated by, OK, this is a job for me. Uh, sure, UFOs are great. And yeah, they're they're important, but I got to pay my bills, too. You know, so I don't consider Mellon on the top of that list, but I would absolutely consider some of the others potentially on it. So hopefully John, that thank explains you for more. your time. No I problem, we sir. Could do, you know, I realize it's late. You know, I'll I'll try to get back to you. I no, appreciate your, your uh, thoughts, sir. No problem. Thank you. And uh, thanks for listening. So let me make sure I didn't miss anything there. And uh, I wasn't dodging his question, but I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Uh, you know, I just don't want to go to the placing of accusations there and former CIA and stuff like that. He may have very well uh, talked okay. about it, but, you know, who, who knows what what where that came from. And I just didn't want to go there. Um. Thoughts on Luis Elizondo saying he was told by someone in government that UFOs are demonic. I've heard that quite a few times. I've always had potential concerns about it just simply because what one man or woman's opinion is doesn't necessarily uh, either get or stop the funding of something. So, I'd be, I'm, you know, I mean, again, these government officials on the inside, albeit could very well think that this is demonic. I don't believe that they're making financial uh, decisions to either fund or not fund a program based on that. I know that Luis Elizondo said that that played a role, and I don't want to seem disrespectful by going against that. I would just be very surprised to hear that that was truly an official stance within the, the arms of the DOD. And then they go, no, we're, we're not touching a tip that there's demons flying out there. I, I just don't see it. The nuts and bolts aspect of this are a potential concern. They have been convinced enough to do a task force and to throw at least some money to it. And it's got the Senate's attention. I don't believe that if there was a demonic aspect or if there was a belief of a demonic aspect to this, that that would play any role internally on a smaller scale, water cooler type talk. Yeah, maybe. I just don't believe that that truly would be the nail in the coffin for thwarting this type of an effort. I mean no disrespect to Luis Elizondo by again not not believing 100% of that aspect to it. Lots of uh, Luis Elizondo questions. Does Elizondo's occasional woo talk like on his interview with engaging the phenomena undermine his credibility for you? If we trust him on one thing, a tip, don't we have to trust him on everything he says? I don't know exactly what you're talking about with Wu talk other than I'm, I'm, I believe that I do. Uh, and that is the fact that he now has 
uh, talking a little bit more about life forms, uh, essentially speculating a little bit more. People read into that speculation. Does he have insider knowledge of something? Um, I'm asking those questions because I don't know the answer. I don't know if he would have insider knowledge or anything like that. But I do fall back that if there was this connection to a little bit more of that woo talk, uh, that that would be classified in nature. I, I mean, I truly believe that I mean, if they were able to prove off world vehicles, if they were were alien, if they were able to prove that aliens were living in our ocean, whatever the woo talk is that you're exactly referring to. Um, I believe that stuff like that would be a classified in nature topic. So you wouldn't see Mr. Luis Elizondo going out talking about it. But in fairness, he has every room to speculate, just like me, just like you, just like anybody who who has a platform to do so. So there's nothing wrong with speculation. But in the same respect, we shouldn't we shouldn't read into it too much. Now, if he comes out and says he's got insider knowledge that something's extraterrestrial or off world vehicle or whatever, cool, we can have that conversation. But I also don't want to mislabel what he's saying, because he, like me, uh, has room to speculate also based on the information that we we have seen. And, and uh, obviously, that applies to all of you as well. So uh, great question. But uh, uh, oh, in regards to undermining his credibility. You know, I, I don't find any problem with the with the speculation, you know, and, and people are going to believe certain things or speculate in certain ways that I don't necessarily agree with, or that you don't necessarily agree with. I speculate in certain ways that people on this channel don't agree with me on. And that's okay. That's, that's, um, that's all part of the game. Uh, and that's the fun of this topic. So I would say, let's give him room to speculate. I'm always intrigued by his speculation. Uh, and that if he is going to double down on that speculation and say that it's grounded in some kind of wreckage that he held or photograph that he saw or video that he uncovered or whatever, uh, we can definitely have that conversation. But until then, I think he's just doing what a lot of us are doing and taking our experiences and what we've seen and then speculating a little bit. Another Luis Elizondo question. Luis Elizondo got upset with narrative with the narrative. He is disinformation. And I'm sorry, I'm, uh, it's a little disjointed here. Luis Elizondo got upset with the narrative that he has a disinformation set against the law for him to disinform. Okay, so it's essentially a dis disinformation uh, allegations against him. He got upset because it would be illegal for him to do so. Uh, and he's and he's likely right. Um, but has that stopped the government as a whole from doing that in the past? The answer is a clear and resounding no. So that's not against Luis Elizondo, but rather the government as an entity uh, they absolutely have done that. One more uh, pictures. Uh, Apollo. Okay. Um, sorry, skimming through here. Wow, a non-UFO question. I have to take this. Operation Snow White documents. Is there any information posted on the Black Vault that discuss what Lawrence Wright described as FBI agents discovering 120 people huddled in a pitch black basement and placed in small cubicles at the Church of Scientology headquarters in L.A. So this, uh, wow, non-UFO question. I don't even know what to do with that. Uh, Operation Snow White obviously was uh, a code name for essentially the Church of Scientology infiltrating numerous government agencies and in, in, in essentially stealing uh, information. Some people went to, to jail after pleading guilty. I just posted a ton of documents. Uh, about that. So if you go to theblackvault.com, just search for Operation Snow White, it will pop up uh, or search for Scientology and you'll actually come up with Snow White documents, but also a bigger file on the Church of Scientology itself. Um, I won't say that I have studied all of the information that has come out on uh, those FBI files. Uh, so there's a lot to read off the top of my head. No, that does not sound uh, familiar with the Lawrence Wright uh, and 120 people huddled, huddled in a pitch black basement. That doesn't mean it's not there. So I would definitely download those re records if you're interested. Uh, but there's a lot there. And, and admittedly, I would not be versed on every single page. Uh, so hopefully that'll that'll point you into the right direction. Let me uh, bring in this caller. So sorry for the hold. Who's this? Hey, John, this is Jordan from Minnesota. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, Jordan, thanks for uh, calling. It's my pleasure. Sorry about the hold time. What can I do for you? So you are the king of FOIAs. You are always chasing down the truth. And I know here in the ufology world, it's a, 
a hunt between a number of different departments and people and trying to get straight answers. So my question to you is, let's say someone gave you a truth serum and you were able to use that truth serum to ask one person a list of questions. Who would that person be? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, wow. That's a tough one. I, you, you may have stumped me on being able to give you an answer off the top of my head. Cause I'm not sure there, there are quite a few officials in the past that I would, that I would love to sit down and, and ask them a question, but who that would be more than anyone else. I'm not, I'm not sure to be honest with you. Um, that's a, a great, a great question. And I'm going to write it down. And I'm gonna, I'm going to have to revisit that in the future. Do you mind? That sounds great. Thanks for your candor, and keep up the great work. No, I, I, I feel bad that I haven't. Uh, oh, and thank you. I, I feel really bad that I don't have a better answer for you. But man, great, fantastic question. Out of every live question uh, show, live show I've done, one of the one of one of the stumpers, I, I, I would say. Um, let me grab this caller. Uh, who's this? Hi, uh, John. This is Nathan from San Antonio, Texas. How are you? Hey, Nathan. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, I've got just a couple of thoughts I wanted to get your uh, opinion on. Um, what is your thoughts on the government saying that these craft are not some super secret program we've had? And the other one, the other question is, assuming that disclosure does happen, who is the guy you want to see on the podium making that announcement? Well, the first part of the question uh, in regards to the military denying that it's a, a, a you know top secret program, who's to say they're not lying? Now, that's not me trying to debunk any of this, but rather that is a potential because history shows us they will lie. Area 51 is a prime example, right? The F-117 is a prime example. The B-2 stealth bomber is a prime example that they will dodge or create a narrative that is not true about programs that they have. So by them saying, no, this isn't us, we don't know, is potentially a strategic move, you know, and, and, and a potentially a way for them to get the eyeballs off of them and put somewhere else. Do I think that that's my top theory? Not necessarily, but also that is something that I that I can't rule out, you know, that 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 they would potentially lie about this being top secret or classified technology that they don't want to admit to. Because, again, strategically, it's it's a it's a brilliant move, uh, you know, uh, because then that makes all the world superpowers that are watching us and, and seeing what technology that we have if it truly is ours, and then we put it out there that we have no idea what this is, it creates confusion and, and, and creates a seed of doubt uh, in these world superpowers. So we have to keep in mind that counterintelligence plays a role in this, whether we like it or not. And that counterintelligence aspect to this is something that we can't discount. And history shows us that they will absolutely mislead if it serves them a benefit. So that's what we have to take into consideration until we can rule it out. And in my personal opinion, we can't rule that out. The second part yeah. uh, of your question, who would I want at the podium? You know, I, d I don't really know who the, the best person would be. I'd like to see the scientific community uh, confirm this uh, outside of a government head simply because it's just that it'd be a government head and who can trust the government on anything in relation to this issue. But then I'd play devil's advocate with myself and say that, yeah, the leader of the free world, giving that white house lawn, you know, uh, uh, announcement to the world would be fantastic too. So I think that there's, there's things to be said uh, in, in, in both methods, I should say, but I do want to see those of, of science of, of, of a scientific background disclose to us the reality of whatever it is they're disclosing. And, uh, and sure, if, if it's that the government has some kind of interaction or communication, then sure. But I'd like to see somebody of, of note, like a, a sitting president, give that address. And if it's rather a discovery 
um, then then I would really hope that scientific the scientific community would band together and create maybe even a joint press conference to really say, OK, look, you know, after years of study or after this discovery or whatever, this is what we have. So I don't think that that really answered your question, but at least kind of threw out a couple possibilities. So what about the uh, uh, when it comes to the secret technology, you know, that suddenly we have to have a space force? Um, and I'm just wondering if we're building up to some sort of revelation of of new technologies that we've been keeping secret for so long, like just like they did with the stealth fighter, you know, years ago. Well, I, I will say in regards to the Space Force, there's nothing new about that. I mean, we've had a Space Command for many, many years. Essentially, they, in my opinion, they changed the name and made it a little bit more grandiose. But, but the root of it, it roots into, you know, the Space Command, which was part of the United States Air Force. And essentially that they've been in operation for many, many years, decades even, uh, essentially, which is, which is the Space Force. So the Space Force, in my opinion, Space Command 2.0. And I think that there was a little bit of politics in this. You know, I think that Donald Trump, whether you hate him or like him, this isn't politically uh, motivated here, uh, but rather he wanted just to be that guy that created the Space Force, you know. And I think that there was a, a little bit of politics uh, on his end to, to do that and to, to change the landscape of the United States military. So at its core, I don't believe that it changed that much. But the aura around it did the landscape of it did by creating another branch of the United States military. So I think that there was a little bit of politics in there as well. Is it connected to the UAP phenomena and talk about it and, and so on and so forth? I personally don't think so. I think it's probably more coincidental than anything. Um, and again, I think in the eyes of the government, they will want to keep the UAP phenomena drastically far apart from the space force. Cause if they, start combining that and saying that this phenomena, whatever it is, is flying in space. Uh, and even though there may be evidence to support that with NASA live streams and photographs from even going back to Apollo missions and stuff like that, the, um, the reality, if they were to join those two things, would be incredibly problematic for them. And so that's why I think that uh, they'll probably try and keep it very far apart. And again, in my opinion, that's not connected, just more coincidental. Gotcha. John, it's been an honor to speak with you. Appreciate it. Keep appreciate, up the great work. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Call anytime. Uh, thanks for, for watching the channel. Let me go ahead and bounce that. Let me do a couple more, and then I am going to have to to end this, guys. I hate to do it, but what time did I start? 9, 30, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Wow, two and a half hours. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let me see. More Greer. Greer's a, a, another one. I think we touched on Greer enough, though. Uh, hey there, Nate, long time listener, first time question. What is the status of your FOIA attempts to uncover the money trail from the SAPOC and SRG to the defense contractor supposedly gatekeeping the crashed off world tech? Have you looked into the defense tech and logistics organization mentioned in the Tom Wilson, Eric Davis notes? If so, what's the status? Okay, in regards to the crashed off-world technology, those are very big claims that are really not grounded in anything verifiable. So going after information on that really did stem from the original New York Times article that talked about specially designed buildings at Bigelow Aerospace. Now, I bring that up because that truly was a very underappreciated element to that story. Because that's a big claim to make, that they have pieces of something from these from this phenomena, and we're housing it in special buildings. And I pushed on that point for a long time. And it ultimately concluded with Robert Bigelow coming forward and saying he never got anything, right? That just came out earlier this year, I think it was, that he never got anything. So that element to the New York Times story, albeit was maybe rooted in some building modifications that Robert Bigelow did, it, there was nothing there. And, and, and Robert Bigelow said that there was nothing there. Now, is he lying in the interest of national security? Sure, maybe if somebody wants to make that claim. Um, but to a point, we have to understand that some people are honest sometimes. And that if he's actually saying that there was nothing there, maybe there wasn't. And I know that there was a claim. And if, if you guys haven't listened to the 
to the train wreck of an interview I did with uh, Anthony Anthony Bergaglia and his claim that OSAP had captured UAP pieces of debris and he got the reports or whatever. Uh, It was a train wreck of an interview, but stories like that don't help that narrative just simply because Robert Bigelow said nothing was there. Dr. Putoff said that they never got anything, nor did those reports deal with UAP uh, off world tech. Uh, So that entire element to the 2017 story uh, essentially is a nothing burger, right? There's nothing there. Is there off-world vehicle technology away from that? Potentially. But to go through FOIA to get that is now a challenge. Because when you pursue it through, uh, let's say, the OSAP program and and what the New York Times has reported, but they erroneously attributed it to ATIP, Regardless, you have something that you can cite as a source and go to the government under the FOIA and say, okay, look, during 2008 to 2012, you guys did this program. New York Times reports there's there's wreckage. uh, So you can pursue that. But now that entire thing has fallen apart. So that goes away. Right. There's no evidence to support that that was actually real. So now what do you have? And you have essentially a fishing expedition to try and find off world technology vehicles that have crashed. Without a date, without a time, without a non-anonymous source, right? I mean, you can't just say a secret birdie told me that you guys have anonymous or have uh, anomalous wreckage that is located at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. You can't do that through FOIA. You need to say Sergeant So and So has gone on the record with Politico and said X Y Z. That is a citable source. You can't do anonymous sources when it comes to FOIA. It just doesn't work. You can try, and sometimes you'll get lucky, um, absolutely. But for the most part, you can't say it's based on uh, a secret birdie. So to back to your question, it's a tough one to really pursue just because it really is a fishing expedition, and there's nothing at this point concrete. Going back to way earlier in the show when we were talking about the how put off comments on the NIE, which was talking about crashed UFOs, Uh, that's never been substantiated as a real document, let alone a real story. So again, when you drill into a lot of aspects of those types of claims, it falls apart. I'm not saying that it's all 100% fraudulent, but rather from a research angle, it's nearly impossible to try and um, do anything with. So Nate, thank you for that question. This may be one of the last callers. Let me go onto the phones. Uh, Who's this? Uh, yes, hi. This is uh, Lee Martinez from El Paso, Texas. How are you? Hey, Lee. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Uh, doing good, doing good, John. Uh, thank you uh, really quick for everything you do. And I, I just had a really simple question, man. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Sam Harris. Yeah, we talked Yeah, we talked about him a little bit earlier in the show, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, okay, cool. Um, Then I can probably just replay it on, on YouTube. I just uh, got on, on the show late. Uh, that's okay, work, that's okay. And, um, yeah, my question was in regards to somebody contacting him. And, you know, I've been a massive Sam Harris fan for years, and he just wouldn't say that. So I just think that has a, that carries a lot of weight. And I was like, what? Something must be going on then. Yeah, you know, it, it's um, the short of it to, to kind of nutshell version it uh, from prior to the show is claims like that. Even somebody with a huge following. I know he's very well known. I don't know much about him. Uh, but yes, sir. I'm eager to see a little bit more proof of that. I would think that if they really did ask him to play a role in a process like that, that that in itself would come along with a non-disclosure agreement or something like that, that he couldn't talk about it until after it was all said and done. So I'm not saying that that he's lying. I'm just eager to more see proof of what he's saying uh, actually come to fruition. And that's a oh, okay. big question mark. So I'm open to it. I just kind of have my doubts on claims like that. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and thank you for giving me the, the TLDR of it. And like I said, man, it was just interesting because he doesn't touch anything paranormal. So it just kind of struck me as profound. Thank you for everything you do, man. And uh, thank you for fighting for the truth. And, uh, you know, keep watching. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thanks for using the phrase TLDR. Yep. Not a lot of people use that. So I see it online all the time, but never in spoken words. So very cool. <laughs> you take care, Lee. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, man. Well, thank you so much, man. Keep fighting, and, uh, and I love your website. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Uh, a couple more, a couple more. What are the ramifications, if any, the Pentagon could face for destroying Luis Elizondo's emails? Personally, I don't think they did. Uh, you're absolutely right um, with the question on uh, you don't think that they did. Um, I don't think so either. Now, there are ways that I am attempting to access the emails. 
uh, in a different way, a roundabout way. I hinted at it in my article. I'll talk about it a little bit more in brief by saying that even though they destroyed the mailbox and the emails and the attachments and the calendars and the chat transcripts of Luis Elizondo, and I have that in writing, the opposite end, people he was communicating with may potentially not be destroyed. So prior to publishing that article, I set in motion numerous Freedom of Information Act requests seeking out Luis Elizondo's emails and who he would most likely communicate with. And it was a roundabout way to get uh, access to emails that would pertain to the questions that I'm trying to answer. Uh, essentially, a tip, UFOs, UAPs, what was he doing, so on and so forth. So I had set that in motion prior to ever coming public with this story. Uh, and I know for a fact the Pentagon caught on to what I was doing. Uh, I know they've mentioned it to me and they're processing those requests. So what will transpire from that? I really don't know other than I set in motion those cases in hopes to still discover his emails. Uh, but as I said in my article, that is definitely a story for another day. Let me hit another phone call here before I end it. Who's this? Hi, John. How are you? This is Andy from New York. Hey, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for calling. I'm sorry if you were on hold for a while. Uh, what can I do for you? It's quite all right. Much appreciated. Everything you do is uh, really wonderful and fantastic. Thank you. Um, my question, yeah, my question has to do with the Navy's UFO patents uh, because it uh, it can suggest a couple of things. Either it's uh, it's been U.S. tech all along with UFOs as a cover for that. Uh, maybe it's uh, reverse engineered UFOs and uh, and it points in that direction, or possibly a, a mix of the both. So, just generally speaking, your your thoughts on the uh, UFO patents from the Navy. I think that they're really interesting. I think the patent office, uh, even away from those some of those Navy patents, holds some extraordinary, uh, you know, uh, patents, essentially technology that people have conjured up. Uh, when it comes to those patents, I would definitely say that Brett Tingley, investigative journalist, is definitely the pro. He has dug in deep on those things, written quite a few articles for The Drive. So I would recommend that you look at those. My personal opinion is I'm not really sure other than I, I think that they're that they're classified pieces or I'm sorry, that they're uh, pieces of technology potentially leading into classified programs uh, if they can get some of that stuff to work. But in regards to back engineering and stuff like that, I would imagine that stuff like that wouldn't be patented. So anything connected to any type of reverse engineering, let's say if they did capture an off-world vehicle or, or something from an off-world vehicle and they were trying to essentially reverse engineer it or back engineer it, that they wouldn't create a patent and file it. <laughs> you know, that I think that, that stuff like that would be so... Uh, kept near the vest within the classified world, it would never, ever be found within uh, a, a patent office or patent database. Because for those that don't know, you can go on and download these patents, you know, and, and ha everybody has access to them. So I think that if there was any type of shroud of secrecy whatsoever that surrounded them, that we wouldn't find them there. Right. Now, to that point, could it be possible that those patents were filed, so to speak, in order to muddy the waters on the UFO issue? Uh, it's I don't see that. Again, I, I think that the general public muddies the UFO issue darn well on its own, that I don't think that the military has to to, to do that because I, I don't see a motive. I don't see what they would gain from doing something like that. I think that what they would want to do is um, essentially, again, not to repeat myself, but if it was either a back engineering thing or, or whatever, they would shield that. If they wanted to muddy the waters, I don't think that they would do it with patents. Uh, again, I think the general public is very good at doing that on its own. And I think that I'm not insinuating that Jeremy Corbell or George Knapp are a victim to this, but essentially leak something you know, leak something to an outfit that will give it publicity and mislead or muddy the waters that way. Uh, but rather filing official patents and going through that, to me, there would just be too much effort for that. I mean, keep in mind that the, the counterintelligence world, the, the less footprint you have, the better, meaning the, the least amount of work that they can do with the most amount of effect that they can accomplish, I feel would be better. And so for them to just say, okay, look, let's, let's leak this information out there. Let's put that out there. 
general and then they'll wipe their hands clean of it and the general public does the rest. And so, again, from a CI perspective, and, and again, this is just an opinion, uh, but from a CI inspect, uh, perspective, that would be gold because then their footprint is very small. All they did was throw that stuff into the wind and let the general public do the rest with filing patents and doing stuff like that. Then you create paper trails. Uh, you create a lot more evidence. Um, I'm surprised that that Salvador, and I think it's pronounced Pace, mm -hmm. uh, Salvador yeah. Pace, Pace or something like yeah, that. Yeah, is even real. I mean, the drive like tracked him down and talked to him. Uh, yeah. And kudos to them. I, I literally would have bet money that that dude was a ghost and didn't exist. <laughs> and yet there he is. So, you know, uh, kudos to them. And that's why they're investigative journalists. And I just run a YouTube channel. But uh, regardless, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I feel that there's too much of a paper trail with that, that if, if they wanted to muddy the waters, there were much easier ways to do it. A very fair point. Let me leave you with this. And thank you again for taking my call. Sure. What's the most compelling video or image of a UFO uh, that you've seen from from your perspective? And thank you again. Thank you. I, I do appreciate uh, do appreciate the call. So great question. What do I figure is what's compelling? And that's a really that's a really tough one for me. I mean, there's there's obviously cases in history that I like uh, and, and I'm intrigued by. But but actually, it's less videos and photos and more documentation, you know, because photos and videos are so easily faked, especially nowadays. I, what I truly like is the hardcore documentation. And it, of course, it's not as fun and visually stimulating uh, reading a document versus actually seeing a video. Um, but I truly mean this. I find more value in that than I do a photo or video simply because of the debunkable nature of almost anything you put forward. Case in point, the last few years, you know, and you look at the Fleer Gimbal Go Fast, the Sphere, the Acorn, the whatever, <laughs> whatever nicknames are out there. Uh, you look at how those are so easily attacked and potentially even debunked. Um, it makes visual imagery very challenging to really get behind and go, man, you guys got to look at this one. Uh, that's why I love documentation, because there's more information you can vet. There's more information you can read. And if I had to pick one, my personal favorite or one of the favorites is the 1976 Iran incident. I've talked about it on this channel before. Uh, but to answer your question, definitely the 1976 Iran incident, because that is the case. And the four pages uh, of um, of an intelligence report that kept me going 25 years after it was sent to me. I didn't discover it. It was been been around for many years. In fact, I think it was released uh, before I was even alive. But that document, when I first received it from the Defense Intelligence Agency, outlined such a story that was so amazing to me, I haven't let go since. And uh, so uh, either email me, john at theblackvault.com, or just search theblackvault.com for 1976 Iran incident. You'll come up with that document. I encourage you all to read it. All right, so here's the deal. I have to go. I'm sorry to say. Um, I can't believe through the course of the last two and a half hours, it looks like by my viewing anyway, if these YouTube stats are correct, about 4,000 of you have come through this room. Hundreds of you still watching, shy of 400, uh, still with me. I know some people can't stay for the t two and a half hours, uh, you know, and I don't blame you. But uh, regardless, uh, so encouraging and motivating for me. Uh, all of your support, those that threw your super chat support uh, at me, thank you so much. I hope you see the value in that. It goes right back into this channel, uh, but also the uh, Patreon supporters, uh, both the present, the past, and also if you consider it, 100% of that all goes back into the website. I don't pocket anything. I don't take my family out to dinner. Uh, it just gets invested right back into uh, either purchasing server space or stuff like that. I have a couple dedicated servers. That's why it becomes expensive. And there are literally terabytes worth of data uh, throughout the 2.4 million pages of documents that are available to all of you for free. Uh, I don't charge anything for it, as most of you should know. Uh, everything is free. But if you do decide to, to sign up on Patreon, the link is below here on YouTube, or you can just go to theblackvault.com and you can see the link on the right-hand side. 
Also, you will see the shop. Some of you asked about the book earlier or t-shirts. Uh, this book is available to you. So if you guys dig UFOs, just go to the shop link. Uh, I know Amazon's got a great um, uh, price on it right now. So please uh, consider that. It, it really does truly support the site and 100% of the proceeds goes to that. There are tons of chat messages uh, that have gone through and admittedly could not get to them. Tons of text messages that I couldn't get to. And I want you all to know how appreciative I am. And I will not forget these. I will do this again and address these. I'll address these first before I open up the lines because I know most of you, um, you know, probably didn't get your, your question answered and I'm here to do that. So thank you all again. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on the podcast, I'll make this a podcast version for those who want to listen to it as well. Please give a review, whether you listen on iTunes or Spotify or whatever your podcast aggregator is. I shoot for five stars. Uh, that's what I'm hoping uh, uh, that I achieve for you guys. But most of all, thank you for helping spread the word. That is the biggest help to me more than all else. So with that, Thank you all. Enjoy your weekend. And thank you for spending part of your Saturday with me right here on the Black Vault. This is John Greenwald Jr. signing off, and we will see you next time.